All right, my dudes, we are back with some more Kerbal Space Program. We need to go over and rescue STS-123, who didn't quite make it to the runway. Uh, <clears throat> during our last re-entry, our last shuttle re-entry, missed our target, came in a bit short because I believe um, a lot of our speed, we tried to do a 15 plus degree roll to the starboard, and I think that uh, that's what's responsible for really um, destroying our speed and putting us in the situation that we are right now. Uh, so we need to go over and pick these dudes up. I was toying with the idea of building a boat so that we could uh, actually bring the shuttle back. That would be really cool. But, man, I wish I could uh, come up with another idea for this landing gear. Maybe we should do that before we get into this mission, fix this, this landing gear. It is not good. What if we were to do something like this? Give us a tank, like a small, what's the smallest tank? We've got the RCS tank. That thing's, not that one, this one here is pretty small. Uh... Okay, so let's see here. Yeah, give us a tank. If we take this tank and surround it with those grip plate things. Boom! <laughs> oh. Starch face, how's it going, man? Something like that to create our wheel. Oops, wrong one. Oh. Hello, hello. Good eye, Cobra. That's the one you were looking for. Your signature exclamation uh, uh, command. Why isn't that going flat? Oh, you know, because the... Alright, I know what's going on here. Um, but yeah, something kind of like this. That's actually kind of a cool look. All right, we need to get this thing on a axis that's not going to screw with us. So I think that should be flat over here.
upgrading the chopper. No pontoons on this one. Um, well, I wasn't actually planning on really upgrading the chopper. I just... We need to go and pick up STS-123. And... Um, so we're going to use the chopper, but then I see what we've got here. And it's like, yeah, let's go ahead and knock this out real quick if we can. And it's more of a quick fix than an upgrade, I would say. Because that list, this is terrible. What we've got down here is god awful. It's like, that's unacceptable work right there. Not worthy of this channel. How come I can't get to the other symmetry? What is... What's the story here? I can't... It's not letting me switch to the other symmetry. Did we accidentally put... I don't know what the hell happened there, but... I'm gonna do it again. You know what? We might even be better off not using a tank actually because that part gets um hidden anyway and it's using a tank would be fragile so if we instead use a, just a cube awk might serve our purposes a bit better oh i know now why it wasn't giving us the symmetry this game's bizarre when it comes to symmetries like it'll only work on one axis Regard, I've tried all kinds of things to give us this other, the other axis, um, getting symmetry to it, and it's just weird. Like, I've tried moving the whole vessel 90 degrees, you know, and then, and it just, it refuses. There's, there's just no way to make it happen. It's to my knowledge. Um, let's get this little thing here for the hubcap. Like that. Okay, and then pull this stuff out. And there you go, there's our, our fabulous wheel. Okay, let's get rid of this abhorrent trash right here. Um, and a node would be lovely. Let's take uh, another one of these. Go a uh, two-way symmetry, two-mirror symmetry. And bring this over. And set us up a nice little axle here. I can't see how far away we are. Okay. All right. And now we can take our wheel and pop it on like that. Uh, probably be a wise thing to get some auto struts here. Okay, that's gonna auto strut symmetry. Did what? What about the other side? Yeah. Okay, it took it too. What's, why, what is this? Oh, it's the round, right. Yeah, we don't want the round. We want Canadian wheels. They may be a little too boxy. We may come back and put another set or something. They are quite boxy. But I'm pretty sure they won't break. That's like, that's, I guess that's a real important thing. Hmm, that looks too close.
I know, who uses round wheels, right? Crazy. Indeed. <sighs> Let's just see how it works. concerned about that angle because when we're actually sitting landed the back end is going to be kind of tilted towards the ground just a little bit and it would be best to have the bottom flat part of the wheel to be flush with the ground when at that angle if we can get it just right Which we're not. We're still on a corner here. But everything seems to be okay. Uh, let's do a little stress test on it here. How about that? Just a quickie stress test. Uh, turn up the torque. Uh, zero. SAS. Um, we need get how to fly this damn thing okay main prop shouldn't need the rudder just give me a little main prop and uh, lift off okay and stomp it oh okay yeah so the outer parts break but we gotta come down pretty tough to do that to break it up but it's still okay I mean the landing gear is essentially I mean it did the job but we want to turn this just a little bit that way another thing too if we put um, a strut from the bottom plate to the top plate, then our wheel will be even stronger still. I want to actually effectively double the strength if we uh, take a strut. Take it right here. Up to this. We're not in a symmetry here. I don't actually I don't think that it would be able to hmm. I have no idea how the game would try and figure this out if we tr it probably just wouldn't work at all. We can go ahead and just get these ad hoc or I could copy this thing over again. That's always an option as well. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll just copy it again. Yeah, I do believe that this little trick here will be more effective than building spokes to the inside. Just because of the way Kerbal Space Program's strutting system, auto strut system works. Well, actually, no. That's right, it would be stronger, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Let's go ahead and do that. I go out from the damn yeah it won't give us the because now the the mirror or the radial symmetry is still not giving us radial symmetry at all hmm shit it does out here 
Well, this actually we can do this. We can still do this in a mirror symmetry or uh, radial symmetry if we take the outside pieces there and just do it backwards like this. Take it in. There you go. All right, that ought to make it really strong. And then also, I'm not sure, but we might be able to take this cubic. No, it's just removed from symmetry. I was going to say... If we could put that as a um, auto, auto strut to the heaviest, then this thing would be omega strong. But it st should still be quite strong. Um, Nah, we want we wanted to put a little bit of turn. Okay, just a tad bit back this way. Try that. Are you making them free to rotate? No. No, they're fixed. Like why? Why would I? Why would we want them to rotate? I mean, honestly. I mean, in real life, it makes sense, but for our purposes, not really. It's still a little bit on the corner, but it's better. Strength test. Okay, up we go. And bring it down. Yeah, bring it down. Okay, that was a pretty decent hit. Ooh, there we go. Ooh, yeah, okay, now that was... Yeah, it's strong. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty strong. Okay. If they can rotate, um, you won't have to be concerned concerned about the angle because they'll always find the angle. You're absolutely right about that. Um, okay. All right. I mean, it, let's be honest. Um, having a wheel that, that spins doesn't make a whole lot of sense.
I mean, it kind of defeats the purpose of a wheel in design to have it spin. It's kind of ridiculous, actually. Ridiculous! Motor off. Motorize no. Power loss free. Auto. Okay, and our wheel. That breaks our struts. Our struts went completely rogue because we redid this. Hmm. Looks like it actually isn't going to work for us to do it like like this because that's not going to copy over. Oh, it did. <coughs> huh. Okay. Alright, so there you go. The wheels spin now. It's probably the most absurd thing I've ever heard. What the? Oh, pfft. okay, so it would seem as though the this isn't going oh no wait a minute if we say torque if we use put this into a cow controller and then did the same thing with like the hinges we overclock this with a lot of torque will it hold itself together or that actually doesn't make sense it would hold itself together only with spin uh, the effect of spin stabilization because of the torque, if we added like Omega style torque to this thing, but being able for it to actually hold itself into place, I don't think it'll do that. Maybe it will.
gonna need to be motorized. Is it showing us? No, that's the RPM limit, right? Okay. All right. Well, um, let's see. See what we can learn out of this little setup. I was curious about the physics of this for the sake of the hinges as well. See, a hinge's job isn't just for uh, for motion, right? It also needs to be structurally sound. So in order to do things like the, the wing on Starship, then it needs to be able to hold it and move it. Let's see what happens here. Oh, okay, it... It's better. I don't see that playing the cow controller for the, the difference in... Torque is actually doing anything for it. Only by locking it. Which would make the part pretty much useless because it won't rotate while it's locked. Yeah, so this still raises a an interesting question when we go to build like rebuild starship the hinges are going to do the same kind of thing that any weight on those hinges while it's l unlocked is going to pull against the hinge um, the fact that when we're in flight we'll be able to actually torque it back into place but we're still going to have this kind of effect going on That build RPM? Yeah, it doesn't do anything. It's already at the RPM maximum 460. Mm hmm. All right. Well, we're just going to um, take that out of there and, and fix this. But uh, it does worry me still in terms of the, the robotic parts and what we can rely on them to do. I fear for our Starship build. Seeing what we're seeing here. And take that off, get rid of that. And we're just gonna put fixed fixed wheels. Whatever, it works. Doesn't work if we're not in symmetry though.
I'm half tempted to leave it on the corner because it actually looks m more legit like a wheel for us. If it does if it's not going to cause any problems to leave it like that, then I would actually rather it be like that. Let's put it on the runway and let's see. Might even be stronger because we're actually sitting on a triangle or even uh, even more so. As the triangle goes all the way around and is supporting itself, so it should be pretty omega strong on that angle. Yeah, see, that looks pretty nice. Okay, stress test. Up we go. And down. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Okay, big explosion. Kaboom. Of course, we came down like we would never come down that harsh unless we were falling. <laughs> They're not designed for falling, but they'll pretty much take a landing. All right, let's go ahead and do it. Let's, uh, let's do a mission. Get on over to the uh, to the landing site of 123 and get those guys picked up and brought back to the space center. I don't understand why they're locked in that position and not on the flat side because it shows that it it's more of an attempt to make a wheel than if it's on the flat side then it the top side looks flat you know what I mean like it's just a visual effect that's why we left it so long as it doesn't cause any problems then I'm I'm more keen to leave it there Let's go ahead and <clears throat> get all of our controls up here. Main prop, that goes over here somewhere. Actually, rudder goes over here as well. Prop, rudder, 
port starboard like that over here and then the fore aft pitch okay turn on the batteries SAS on torque up the propellers let's get some immersion sounds We are ready for liftoff. Right, let's do it. So that's, I think that's them over there. This pink, purple node. Go ahead and take it to radial assist. And give us a little bit more propeller. Some more pitch. Yeah, I like the wheel. It looks nice. Yeah, it don't look bad. A little bit of port side roll. Gonna need some more prop in here. Flying with our doors open. We don't normally do that. a nice day out though <laughs> there's nobody back there let's go ahead and close them nobody back there to enjoy the nice weather so we'll close them to get better aer aerodynamic efficiency a little bit of rudder here Live mode on. Starch face caught us playing without the live mode. It's like, yeah, if something goes wrong right now, you'll just be able to go back. Thank you for... <laughs> for demanding. <laughs> For noticing, Keck W. No cheating, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. GG, you caught me. Well played. Yeah, I was thinking um, about putting together like a modest boat, something, I mean, we would have to work number one on speed. It'd have to be a damn fast boat for it to be uh, practical, but it would be really cool. I've been envisioning the pulling the, a boat up, nice big flatbed up to the, uh, up to the beach and rolling the shuttle kind of rolling it on down with the brakes and then slowly kind of dri trying to drive it onto and then taking the shuttle and, and floating it on back. That would be a sweet mission to do, but 
is it practical at all? Be very, very difficult in the physics whole thing. But it would otherwise be a really cool thing to do. I've already done off stream. I built a, an aircraft carrier. Actually, I, off stream, I've piddled around with a couple of boats. We built an aircraft carrier, which is absurd. Like, the part count got way out of hand. And. But it works, essentially. If it wasn't so impractical and the frame count wasn't so low, it would technically work. And then we built another boat. We tried to build a barge for landing, of course, landing uh, Falcon boosters. And mostly what we worked with there just wasn't going to work. It, just, it wasn't practical. So I've got two boats that we've worked on, and neither one of them... Produced any sort of significant uh, positive results, so. kilometers away now. I'm hoping that's them. I think it is. Yeah, that's gotta be. You're gonna let two failures get in your way? You can't stop progress. If it was low part count, see that's the biggest problem is having things that are... We would have to run a test basically on all of the parts to find out what is the most buoyant part in the game. You know, because it's at, like everything. It's all about part count. If you can keep your part count excessively low, like extremely, extremely low, then you can pull off some pretty cool stuff. But when you look at the last thing that we built on stream that was floaty, was the, um, we put pontoons, we made our, a sea hawk, right? We took our black hawk and we put pontoons on it. And when we did that, um, just in the weight of this vehicle here, um, in order to keep it buoyant, it was pretty excessive. I don't know if you guys remember, if anybody remembers, but the, the pontoons were we needed to put quite a few pontoons on and stack them in order to make it work. We did make it work in the end. It's a pretty nice vehicle, but you know, when you talk about scaling that, yeah, there were empty tanks. If we could find a part, if there was a like a suspicious or, uh, you know, like a, uh, just any part in the game that for some reason has flagged as floats really, really well. I've read somewhere that re reaction uh, wheels, that they, for some reason, are extremely buoyant. Um, I tried it, again, off stream, like I tried testing this, that, and the other thing, and really to no great success.
here's another thing too um, the tediousness of it now look we're flying right here we're going 55 meters a second we're, I mean, we could really tear our ass if we wanted to jack the prop and throw in a bunch of pitch. We could haul ass over here pretty quickly, right? But still, you know, we got a nice little modest trip going on. Um, but think about how long it would take us to drive this sucker from where it was at all the way down to the beach. And then finding a way to actually get down to the beach... Like, that would take forever, right? Um, not to mention the moving of the boat from where we launched to get it into the water and then have it move, you know, all of that is just... I think that's really where we call the mission, like, at that point. It's just not practical. It's too much. Now, if there was one more vehicle involved, again, see, this is where it starts to snowball out of hand. If there was one more vehicle involved, then it wouldn't be so bad. Like, if we had a crane vehicle that could come over, actually dock, connect to the whatever payload, and then have really splashy big wheels that it could drive super fast over uneven terrain safely with a huge shuttle on its back to drive it down and even then a drive from here down to like say over there is a long drive that's that's an eight hour drive or could be yeah it's just too much Hey, Skeeter, how's it going, man? Wave? As far as the, I mean, the, the idea for picking this up is cool, completely impractical in the amount of time it would take to do the mission, as if we could actually do have vehicles that would be able to accomplish the mission. Um, however, we've got soyas that are just splashed down, like right off the coast. Now picking those up, that does sound like that would be a practical thing to do. We could build a boat that had a crane and a winch, and we could, uh, we could swim on over there and, uh, pick them up and bring them back. That would be cool and practical. I could see us doing that. Render distance. Yep, there it is. There they are.
let's lock these doors. We're kind of jiggling around here. That'll be a little bit better for our landing. shame to see our shuttle over here and not on the runway but at least we uh, at least our astronauts survived let's be real it could have been a shite side worse Saved it with that cow controller. Uh, where's the torque? Is that on the inside? Where's the torque? Where's the damn torque? Aha, uh -huh, it was being hidden. Another hard landing. to hit F to grab the ladder after we let go of it. Can't seem to make it happen. Our chopper's sliding a little bit. I don't think we turned all of the torque off. We left a little bit of torque and that, that's what's causing this. Stop spinning now. There we go.
one more, I believe, yeah? Kerbals are on board. The shuttle will just stay there. We'll probably just recover the shuttle to get it off of the map. But, uh, yeah, like I said, it would be really cool to collect this thing somehow. Just everything in my mind says that it's impractical upon... On top of it being impractical, it's impractical. So... Anyway. All right, we are ready for liftoff, ready for takeoff. SAS to SAS, and uh, yeah, go ahead and bring this uh, prop pitch. Oh, one more thing. We need some toggle torque. Get some torque into this. Okay, and uh, we are ready for takeoff. Let's go. Wave. Kerbals. This view is super cool. Boy and plain girl are having a good time, always. It is the job they were born for. I actually said it right. Bet you didn't think somebody would be able to pronounce it. Eventually.
had such a lovely day, in fact. Unlock the doors. Get some air back here. Beautiful. Hell yeah. But put on ear, uh, hearing protection for sure. I was about ready to do this little correction with the trim, and that's like, yeah, you know what? The trim is actually dead on for our angle and our speed and everything, so let's just go ahead and make this turn ourselves with the yoke, as it were. It's actually a keyboard and mouse, but... Uh, Four kilometers away now. Having this mission wrapped up. Let's get a little bit of port side roll. It's the tiniest, tiniest smidge. We're gonna have to correct. Yaw. There we go. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. It's a damn fine chopper. I like this thing a lot. Should be back at the Space Center in less than eight minutes. Sit back and enjoy your complimentary ice waters. Since when do they put ice in the water?
Actually, they don't even they don't even give you complimentary water anymore. Like Allegiant flights, you have to pay for your water. And it's expensive too. They like for just a little bottle of Aquafina, you know, just a, like a 20 ounce. It's 20 ounce. Yeah, 20 ounce bottle of Aquafina is like five bucks. Insane. It's worse than going to a theater. Alcard is glad to take off his helmet after two weeks. <laughs> he wasn't out there that long. descent going on here. Yeah, we still have to do a, uh, a recovery with our new Seahawk. Built this, put pontoons on this sucker, and have yet to actually use it. That'll work pretty damn good, though.
Tower 1 still stands over there. It's been a while since we've tried to uh, take that thing out. This is basically our target. The Tower of Saruman. We use it for any kind of weaponized vehicles. We did it, in fact, one time. We were off stream, but we launched it. We went on an attack run with um, the Lightning 2. And I finally did hit the sucker with a missile. It didn't do a whole lot of damage, but it did do a little damage. Like, it took out, like, two or three sections of a wall. That was pretty awesome. But we, had, unfortunately, did it while we were off stream. That approach in the shot, though, I gotta say, was really sweet. It is really, really, really a shame that we didn't capture that on stream when I was doing that. that was, I mean, I jumped up out of my seat and everything when we hit it. It's, it was sick. Our missile technology is really crap. We, we need to come up with a, a better way to fire missiles. It is really hard to hit a target in this game with... Uh, systems that we have. It's effectively like shooting an arrow. Only a, a rocket propelled arrow. Yeah, we do. We got the limos out. Nice. Go ahead and close the doors for landing.
And we're down. Shut those engines off. Cheers. Hey, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hey, Matt. Take a look at what's left of our launch equipment over here for that flight. And yeah, <clears throat> as always, the, um, the launch... Um, the launch pad itself is pretty mangled. Our tower is beautiful. And we've got a limo down here. With Gunter, one of Gunter's crew. And Eduardo. We can drive them on over. and pick up the crew. How did you build that PC mod? Uh, really, there's... You can do all of what we did here with no mods. The only mod involved with what we have right here are like these parts and the only thing that these the only thing is that it's like their shape right that's about that's the only thing we could have used any part for that so there's there are no real mods at play here to be honest all of this for the most part can and is stock with the exception of, like I said, these pieces down here, and that all that they are is the shape. It's just a shape of, that we wanted. Oh, Eduardo, you turned a little bit too hard to get to that road. Oh, we're gonna have to make a five point turn here. Ugh. But we are on PC. You're playing on PlayStation 4? So, are you, do you have all of the um, expansions? They 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 offered all of those for the uh, for the consoles, right? The um, Breaking Ground is, of course, the big one. If you're playing Stock Kerbal, then that's an utter must. Breaking Ground, and we skipped the Making History expansion. We aren't actually using any of that. But we're otherwise 1.10 with the Breaking Ground expansion and a just uh, a modest collection of of mods. Nothing too dramatic. Just very simple. Simple functionality mods that uh, sh should really have been incorporated in the base game. And they're trying, actually. 1.11 1 
as a lot of uh, a lot of efforts was uh, put into basically making stock Kerbal inventory system and Kerbal attachment system, which are the two big mods that we use. That's the So cons consoles can't use mods at all. Is that is that correct? Not in any way, shape, or form. There's no There's no way to mod. Now we got to be careful of this world seam up here. Um, it seems the world seam on this side when we're coming to the pad has a terrible tendency to grab one of our back wheels and and uh, break it. So we got to be we'll be weary of that. See what happens when we do cross this seam. I don't believe we've ever had an issue crossing the seam going this way towards the VAB, but both times that we come across the seam on this side going to the launch pad we pop a tire in Eduardo Eduardo has to get out and repair the tire which was during that last live launch that was actually quite a cool experience <laughs> that was fun in the middle of taking our Kerbals to the launch pad, had to get out and repair a tire. How immersive is that? I believe this will be, this is the second crew um, that we will have picked up with the limousine. But this is the first one we've uh, picked them up with a, from a helicopter. But anyways, we're getting pretty good use out of this limo. I'm liking it a lot. Certainly not even remotely approaching how fancy our first limousine was, but the functionality is is all there. And we didn't pop a tire. Like I said, we crossed that one seam and we didn't pop a tire, so that's... I think it's just the other side. Like, if we, if we always turn and go down the left hand side of the uh, towards the launch pad the crawlers track take the left side of the crawlers track then we won't pop a tire if we take the right side we will pop a tire
Chicks like chocolate, man. Whatever. It's not sexist. <laughs> Snagless Kerbal, how's it going? Wave. And some monoprop engines in the rear to... No, these are actually full liquid engines back here. They're, uh... The Twitch engines. As you can see. So, they're prone... These engines are prone to dropping in midstream. Yeah, it's a it's a real problem. Got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. I just drag this onto him. Will it? It does. It puts it right in his inventory. I don't even have to. Okay, cool. Nice. we're ready to go got all of our kerbals from the STS mission I can drive them home yeah that's pretty sweet I like the uh, getting them beers that's that's pretty sweet Yeah, we could light them and use them. Not really sanctioned. We put them on as a cosmetic thing. Um, we never had truly intended to use them. We we did have to use them when we drove we drove the limo out to Jebediah's factory, right? During a Soya's uh, recovery. And in order to get over the hills, we had to use them there. But uh, originally, this uh, we were never intending on taking this limo up any hills because of the new launch equipment is designed to um, be completely flat, run all the way from the runway or from anywhere. So our vehicles need not have any kind of climbing capability at all. However, it's on here. It's a cosmetic thing. And we can get a little bit of boost out of it. Sure, why not? Get too crazy with it, though.
go all out top gear and make it a shuttle well we did on our last limo um, it wasn't a shuttle but it was a VTOL vehicle um, yeah the the real fancy limo had VTOL capabilities which was absurd In the interest of park count, we decided to not go down that road on this vehicle. Its functionality as a car is pretty darn good. I mean, it's... I wouldn't say it's second to none. I mean, Gunther's vehicle is still king of the, king of the hill as far as our vehicles are concerned and functionality. But it's still... it's pretty cool nonetheless. Get a lot of fun out of it. It's very immersive. Very cute. All right, there we go. So, uh, second mission picked up with our with our limo, and that was a that was a good one. We can now recover these dudes and recover our helicopter, and that brings STS-123 to a close. also want to uh we're gonna go ahead and just pick up the shuttle it's garbage out there and beyond practicality to recover that thing so we'll just get rid of it get it off of the map and essentially ab abandon it Oh snap. Snackless. Bane hammer. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. Holy shit, that was loud. <laughs> the bot caught you. You got banned for one second. Dude, that scared the hell out of me. Our stream, we put our stream into performance mode um, because it trans our transitions are so much better when we're, we do them through the performance mode. So the unfortunate thing is I don't get a stream preview. So the only previews I have to work with are are... are actual preview preview which is us effectively watching ourselves on twitch in which there's a delay so like when we drop things such as the of the band hammer or whatnot then uh it we don't get to see when we don't get to anticipate when it actually drops <laughs> I'm gonna nerf that right now because that's the second time that we've dropped that emote and it scared the living hell out of me. Just a bit. It's not. Yeah, I don't wanna. Don't wanna absolutely kill it. But we're gonna nerf it just a tiny bit. Was a bit overpowering. Powering. It's brilliant. Starchfed says leave it alone. Star Chase just likes to scare me, is the thing, though. I would leave it if it was your guys' command. That is rather an exclamation mark chat command. But since it's our command, I don't want to be scaring myself. Myself? Plural? Whoa. I must be multiple personalities. <laughs> uh, so we're just picking up our launch equipment over here technically 
and we may go ahead and give this a try if we don't accidentally pick it up but we should technically speaking we could just leave our tower it should be a-okay and literally use our tower a second time which would be pretty cool if uh, if it's capable of doing that I see no reason aside from like the hinges moving away from their connection points but that's an eventuality like that's not something that we're gonna go for it we're gonna see if we can keep the tower through multiple launches because that would just be omega cool Accidentally pick it up. There, okay, so yeah, I think that is. Let's take a look. Let's if we go fly. Yeah, since this thing sustain, sustains no damage at all, should be able to just leave it. Not the terrors of one second. Anyway, what did you post? Let's see here. Not the chosen one. How's it going? Hello, hello. Good eye, Cobra. Oh, you know, I do see something. Um, I want to get a strut from this piece. Evidently, this is this is the route for this whole thing. But I did see a physics sleezing happen right here. So if we could get a strut from this piece. I'll just aim the camera at it. There we go. And we just get it. Oh, it looks like we actually anticipated that. We did get a strut. There's a strut right there. It's still sleezed though. So maybe we get another one back over here. This corner, that corner though, we did. We sle we we got it and it still sleezed us. Huh. That should not have happened. Anyway, nothing went wrong. It just, I saw it kind of f just gently move the slightest bit when we came in. But otherwise, I don't see anything wrong with our tower at all. Um, let's go ahead and do an extension and see. Uh, we want to, there we go. And Gunter the king of the tower, so to speak. Strutting along here is kind of meh. Correct that in the VAB if we can. This looks like a... Yeah, that looks like it just went rogue because that struts actually completely the wrong way. There's no way that I did that. Yeah, but otherwise, the tower looks to be in good shape. No worries. Gunter takes a look around. Okay, nobody's looking. Hmm, nobody's looking. Huh? Oh. What do you know?
Wee. Not exactly the kind of thing the safety chief should be. Oh, crap. Yeah, should be seen doing. Um, go ahead and well, we took it this, we've let it go this far. Let's go ahead and just finish out the play. But we do need to retract it before we can put anything on the pad. Well, I'm convinced everything looks in good order, aside from that one little crappy strut over there. So, yeah. Retract that access arm. I guess Gunter can just stay out here as well. I'm cool with that. Let's go back to the Space Center. And get on with the next mission. Oh, got yourself a plane there. It's an interesting looking contraption. So here was our build for the last mission, and one important thing that we had learned with this was is that we can 
work around the auto strutting issue. So essentially this port here will leave this new port and any kind of uh, payloads that we want to put in here if they're getting put in with a Leonardo module can get uh, attached to a, a new port or this this port right there so we'll just leave that um, the next module is a rather large science module it's the one of four parts of the JEM we want to go about this. I don't want to just use this because it's a bit larger. So, in terms of how long it is, yeah, let's go ahead and get this Leonardo module out of here. And let's get this thing out of here, too. Let's just start from scratch. Okay, so the docking port, um, it does need to be a standard size docking port, at least on one side. The other side looks like it's going to have a uh, little docking port for uh, the external stowage platform. So if we take a module, put it on a docking port, something like, uh, let's put a flange on it first, let's see here. Um, not the small one, give me the bigger diameter pan, this guy right there. Okay. And have it going like that, but this guy like that, and then basically the same thing going the other way. No, I don't like it. Um, let's keep it flat. But what I'm seeing is basically windows on this thing are going to be facing fore and aft if we wanted to keep the windows. I don't see that there would be or there are actually any windows at all in the real module, but since this is like clearly the module or the piece, one one of the pieces that we should use, then we're going to, we're going to get windows. So, scat off. Thank you for that follow. Um, so, anyway, the length of this thing, we can do it a couple of ways. Um, I was thinking storage. Storage is clearly, like, this is the easy way this is the easy way out, basically. Um, is that about the size? Looks about right, per se. Maybe a... Yeah, that doesn't look too bad as far as the length is concerned. I feel if we were to try and go any bigger that it would start to look freakish and wouldn't look correct. Yeah, that's definitely too big. But we could do something like this. If we're not happy with the length, we can take one of these and clip it in a bit. If we can make it look right. 
Same thing here, maybe cut a little bit into that. Uh, it does feel like it's a... Uh, still, it feels too big. So, no, veto on that. We're just gonna go with the, um, this size. Doesn't look too bad. Um, and then we'll have, we need to have a standard clamp. Yeah, standard clamp, something like dorsal or ventral. Um, and that's where our current module, which is basically, we'll go ahead and make a mock of it right here. Let's go ahead and get another clamp a tron that goes there like that, and a storage container like that, basically, is how it will all pan out. However, and now I'm really glad that we took the time to do this mock, this would need to be like this so that and if we can get it as flat as possible too that would be another thing we take this port and go like really really flat and then hmm see now this module is actually already in orbit we don't have the chance to redo it but this is how I would have actually we may replace that piece but that it's really flush and this edge is to that edge too. We can line up the one port and get it ready for this but we'll have to relaunch this module to fix that one port if we want it to be this flush. And yeah, that looks really good. Um, and the length still. Now the length is still troubling me however I see a way around it. We get a. We're probably. We're gonna need batteries and s some other stuff. Hell, maybe a big reactor or a big reaction wheel. Rather be enough to. Ooh, yeah, now we're talking. Yeah, that looks great. Um. And then on the portion that's going to be facing port, which is right here, we want a little clampo. A uh, little clampo. And it's going to be like as far to the nadar side, the nadar edge as we can get it, in preparation for a. Um, external stowage platform that we would launch later, a later mission. It would be consist of a Clampo Jr. that connects to this piece like that and an external stowage platform which we've been using this little flatbeds for that. Works pretty good. And flip this guy over. Yeah, just like that. Should be fine. That pops on to that Little Clampo Jr. if we can find it. Is that... Ooh, that looks right. Okay. Um, go ahead and pull all of this mock out a bit. Okay, so we can kind of get a better idea of what we're looking at. Yeah, that one doesn't look wrong. Doesn't look bad at all. If this is a little bit tighter but we really don't need to get into the build of this we just have to have our port ready for to accept it um, yeah that looks pretty damn good and then on the external stowage platform would be the um, again that'll probably be a that'll be a whole nother mission but Put it on there anyway. Let's go ahead and just slap them on there anyway to get, because who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll see something that'll be bad, and we want to avoid it. Huh? Can't 
seem to get flat with these pieces. What the hell? Oh, because we're in snap. There you go. Alright. So, like that. And then we slap on some of these containers. That's under... It's under stowage. Okay, these guys. Like that, like that. And then we would have, I wanted to put a little cosmetic Canada arm. And we should still have, do we have one in sub-assembly? Quickie cosmetic Canada arm we can use here. Oh, we do. Oh, that's Canada Arm 2. This is... Oh, oh, no, this is our cosmetic. Perfect. Just what the doctor ordered. And then this thing... Get it out of symmetry. Say we hook it on to... A little clampo... Yeah, it'd have to be on the top of this thing so that would that's two things that we would need to fix on the last launch this module here which is no real big deal I mean it's a tiny tiny module super simple to uh, get that thing wrapped up yeah say so we had the docking port for the clampo now this may be too high but we're on the front or the side or something what could we do here give me a little bit of both all the way around like if we're gonna do that we don't need it to be as far out right if we can trim it a bit yeah, there you go sure okay then we could just go ahead and get this thing flat for flat we had already moved it but yeah that would do and then we got ourselves a little kind of uh, Canada arm extension that would grab the experiments off the external storage platform and could lift them into this thing I think or do you know whatever they could be astronauts inside of this thing controlling exper uh, experiments outside completely and never have access to them at all who knows there's all kinds of crazy stuff that they could do with this and do do with this um, this actually this piece here does in fact on the picture appear if we're gonna go ahead and make it ad hoc which why not these things are so simple like, stupid simple why don't we put it onto our module that we're creating now so that's where it does look like it belongs and it does look like it's off to one side kind of thing ooh this is looking kind of cool flip it around though like this there you go other piece flip 
fit around as well. And run that axis. And then line it up to give us kind of an elbow effect. Like that. Let me give us more angle. Bring this thing to more of a flat angle. And then this top part gives us more defined angle. That. Okay, now line it back up. Nice, dude. Um, and do something to close this off. Just a. How about a. I'm seeing the, that little taper thing. Here we go. It's nose cone. That, that's too big. Um. There's a thin nose cone that... Hmm. Yeah, that works for me. So yeah, there you go. Um, and in fact, uh, the docking though, we can pull it back a little bit. The one side docking port, or the one side of the docking port face has to be clean. And that looks, that's clean. We'd be still be able to hook that thing, or we could even pull it like to the edge possibly get that thing all the way outside of that nope we won't be able to cut outside of the ring without making it bringing it so far out that it would kind of screw everything up but yeah that's uh about three missions worth of stuff basically here that looks awesome um part count it's not too bad. I mean, the Canada, little Canada arm thing that we made is only two parts, um, with the exception of the the equipment to fly it around, of course. I think it's worth it, though, in the end. We'll need to relaunch this thing. Or not, or he could just say to hell with it and have it a little bit further out. But um, the one thing I see here is this: since this is a mock-up, we've already we made a mistake right here. This this piece cannot be connected to this. This needs to be connected. How are we gonna do this? I eh, just snap it on there. It'll be fine. If it lets you do it, okay. Anywhere on this thing will do. Okay, and then bring it back into place where we wanted it. Yeah, see, it's too far out. I want it to be flush with that edge. I want it to go past that edge. So, go. like that. All right, now the top piece is independent. We can take that off. And basically, what we're looking to launch here is just this piece.
But the way to do this, I would think, let's finish out any kind of changes we want to make to this thing. <clears throat> and then we'll copy the whole the whole thing into a sub-assembly and then bring it in piece by piece for each launch. do we want to change um, we'll need to have autonomous controls but each one of these pieces will need to have autonomous controls with the exception of the Canada arm which is actually built it's built into it but that's a mission kind of objective there and not not the um, greater objective that uh, we should be focusing on here. That's pretty much all that we sh really need. Um, we could f maybe square up this docking port here a little bit perhaps. I kind of like it clipping through the bottom like that. Uh, yeah. We'll be sure to measure this. The one static piece that uh, we need to worry about though is the main we're working on right now do we want to now I don't want to close off those windows that would just be a shame It'd be a low down dirty shame it would um, sorry if I'm reading your message a bit late but uh, what mission are you doing we're into STS 124 right now which is the, um, if you look up International Space Station Assembly and then scroll on down the, um, the mission list for STS-124, we're looking, we're building the JEM pressurized module right now. Well, actually, we're, we're building the whole JEM. But uh, the mission to, uh, that we're looking to launch immediately as soon as we're done with this thing is the, is the main piece here. This is already in orbit, but it's kind of fouled. I am out of coffee. That's no good. We cannot, as a mission critical item, Mission critical item. Um, so, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to pause the mission for a moment while we stretch the legs, fill up the coffee, and uh, when we come back, we'll finish building this sucker and hopefully get into some launching. So, uh, don't go anywhere. We will be right back.
right, my dudes, we are back. Continuing on. Is that Canada arm clipping into the it is clipping into that box. That's a that's a no no. Oh you know what we could do though? When we go to actually make the external stowage platform itself, we just like, ah, but then they're, you know, if we ad hoc them, take them out of symmetry, and then just make sure that this one is over far enough to make room for the Canada arm. I'm cool with that. And then, say, if we right now just take this thing and say remove from symmetry and then grab it. Yeah, okay, I'm cool with that. And we'll definitely, uh, you know, honestly, going to pay a whole hell of a lot more attention to the external storage platform when we go to a build to launch it. Um, and then the canned arm itself as well. I'm seeing another mission going on here. When we go to launch the external stowage platform, um, we'll have, we'll call this bit here as like the Dextry mission. Um, and if we, we can launch the external stowage platform, Dextry, and the corrected version of this in one go. It'll be like a cleanup mission. But otherwise, uh, the only thing left on this aside from the thrusters and so on would be a control from point. <laughs> Which we need not have to, have to be static. That's not all that important. So, let's do it. Well, how it sits right now, I'm, I'm happy with it. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, bring this whole thing into the sub-assembly. What is, uh, what's the story here? I'm in action groups, what, what am I doing? Sub-assembly, okay. I'm not in sub-assembly yet. Crying out loud! Okay, drag that into sub-assembly. And this is... Um, the J... What the... There we go. Why does the J look like a lowercase J to me? I don't know. J-E-M Mach... All right, now that we've got the mock-up saved, we can go ahead and chop these pieces off that we don't need for this mission specifically, such as the external stowage platform, the um, Dextry Canada arm, and the first piece, which is already launched, and that leaves us with our mission stuff is that's how it should look for 
right here. Um, and this now, before we go any further, let's let's put the command stuff on it. So we're gonna need I like a radial connection point. Um, yeah, just anywhere will do, quite frankly. won't matter okay so we get our radial connection point let's put our put our equipment onto that standard kind of get up get ourselves a flight computer get ourselves a couple of things of uh, mono propellant and our thrusterage good old jacks thruster system where we take uh, two of these thrusters like that and then we take two of these thrusters like that and that's all that we need to get all the axis all the axes we need to control this vehicle we pull them out like that Okay, um... And then we want this to be noticeably on the outside. We don't want any of these parts actually touching our module in any way. We want them free-floating because we remove these with Kerbal Attachment System after the fact for part count reasons and we can take these pieces here all and actually we could move them to the sides in the past we generally don't do that sort of thing Eh, leave them up here. I mean, we'll still be able to control it. Everything will be fine and dandy. All the stuff will be... Yeah, go ahead and just leave it the way that we've had it in the past. It should work just fine. Um, okay. Now, we want to turn off those monopropellant tanks. We've got a reaction wheels already incorporated as part of the um, part of the main system that stays. So we've got that covered. Docking node. Oh right, turn off the force. More importantly for these ones, because they're carrying really light loads for docking. Oh, wait, yep, one more up here. All right, I think that's all that there is to it. Decided since this part here is the docking port for the relocation, that if we put our autonomous controls on the the ventral side and not the dorsal side, it'll be better for us because then we won't have to go into an EVA to remove those parts before we get into the docking. We can go ahead and relocate with all this crap still on there. got to be make sure that when we push this into the payload bay that this piece is not clipping through the bottom of our shuttle aside from that I think we are ready to rock and roll and put this thing into the shuttle bay uh, which 
probably yeah just pull it down there it'll be a smart thing to do I was about to pull it off and then reconnect it but why would we want to uh oh we may actually need to pull this over in order to get around our Canada arm locking mechanism as well okay so it clips through right about there so this is as low down as low as far into the payload bay as we can go we need to move it over to the left and that's about as far as a as far to the starboard side as we're going to be able to go in fact that's too far will we we're still clipping oh only just the tiniest bit look at that we flatten it <laughs> dude oh my god no way um, unfortunately this thing now I think is going to clip pretty sure but we have room to pull it back now that we're actually past that we're clipping into our flight computer the tiniest bit there and back this way a bit Boy, it's a big module, isn't it? This is actually quite a quite a feat. good yep that's that's good how are we looking aft go way aft look at that computer It's clear of the computer. Now will the doors close without it clipping into that thing? Nope. Damn. It's still clipping. Um, our autonomous stuff is going to have to be over here. the only way yeah stuff is gonna have to be over here This is kind of weird. I'm thinking if we rotate this thing 45 degrees and then we can twist the whole payload in the bay, that shouldn't cause any problems. I mean, our docking port is still, should be correct if we roll to 90. Yeah, everything should jive. Get snap. 
and go f give me a 45 degree roll on our autonomous controls. Snug this thing, get this thing nice and close to the, oh, it's pretty damn close actually. That's really, I don't see us getting any closer than that to be honest. All right, and then grab our main root connection point. We're still on snap and we want to roll this thing 45 degrees in till the, that stuff is inside. Should be facing directly down. All right. And it does look, yeah, that's fantastic. It will all fit. And now the doors will close without issue. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead and save this project here. We're looking at, um, this is not, L-E-M, this is the uh, J-E-M P-M The J-E-M P-M Save Simulator mode on And we'll leave it. We're going to go ahead and try this without any strutting. Go ahead and close the payload doors and uh, get rid of the reticle. Simulator Kerbals. X, you're up. Y, you're up. Let's go. And this right here, even though we're in the simulator, we're still getting a, um, a reuse out of our launch tower here. This will be the first time that we've ever reused bona, bona fide reused our launch equipment in any way so this is a this is a career first guys pretty cool very very cool I wonder how long we're going to be able to keep this tower out here before it starts to degrade and we're gonna have to pick it back up and launch a new one I mean honestly every launch you know that there's hundreds and hundreds of things uh, on the launch towers and on the launch equipment that gets refurbished but uh, for to be able to do this in Kerbal Space Program is like, I honestly wouldn't have thought back in 1.4.5 or prior to that that this would be capable, we would be capable of doing any of this crap. It is awesome. Okay, yeah, and this is still playing its playlist from the last time we were out here and we were doing a retract so it's uh the force will f soon get behind the weight and it will pull away properly it just looks like crap because physics sleezing right up front but anyway yeah, that's awesome um hold on before it gets too far away we can actually see that's right that's right switch over to the tower if it does in fact still line up Should.
But shoulda, woulda, coulda don't mean crap if it don't, right? Don't mean jack if it ain't backslash jack. You got that? <laughs> That's our new slogan. <laughs> it's very Evil Dead inspired. I mean, who doesn't love Bruce Campbell, huh? It's like the best. There was a little jostle there at the end that looked kind of spooky, but otherwise... Everything appears to be in good order, and it did. It pulled up right next to it. It's, uh... Everything's still lined up. What do you know? <laughs> Super cool. Is that where you got your name? No, it's not. No, I never I did not steal my name from anything. It is not inspired specifically by anything. It's completely original. EJ said the same thing. He only uses robotic parts if there's no other way. Well, I'm glad that I'm not the only one that uh, has that issue. We tested it quite thoroughly. It's like, oh, is, is this drifting thing actually a bona fide issue, issue beyond what we're using? Or is it, uh, you know, is it our stuff? And we... Went through, removed all mods, installed the whole thing from scratch, and tested and tested and tested, and came to the conclusion ourselves that it was a fundamental issue. It was a fundamental game physics issue, and uh, yeah. It behooves people, it would behoove people to v limit the use of robotic parts wherever possible, and use them in a warm and fluffy way. Don't launch satellites with them. That was a bit. That was always everybody jumped to that. Right as soon as as soon as the robotic parts came out, it was like, oh, now I can finally fold all my stuff up in my payload bays properly and launch, you know, kick-ass legitimate satellite dishes and stuff. And people started launching them. And next thing you know, it's like, why is my satellite look all goofy? And next thing you know, 
beyond that, kaboom! The Kraken gets a hold of it and... Yeah. All due to because of the drifting parts. It's a damn shame. But we're on track to uh, continue with this simulation here. Let's take a look at what we've got. Get an ascent guidance up here. 52 degrees. Throttle 58. We may be throttling differently because this, uh, this payload is pretty heavy. Uh, st staging needs to be 0.7. Uh, force roll, that's incorrect. That needs to be negative 180 to negative 180. And then the ascent stage 2.1, 2.1 to 116, and 50 degrees. Okay, like that. All right, so staging is green, guidance is internal. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Hit it. Okay, approaching roll. Engage the roll. Roll complete. Throttle up. 100. 110, we are go for pitch. Vehicle supersonic. Approaching first stage booster flame out separation, main computer override. Two. Flame out. Separation. Computer override. Complete. I just had an idea for a command that I want. I want when I say uh, vehicle is supersonic. I want uh, an audio command that will hear a. It will trigger a sonic boom. That would be pretty cool. I mean, doesn't that just give give you goosebumps? How cool would that be? Vehicle supersonic, and then all of a sudden, boom! Like he 
you hear it, you finally hear it back at Mission Control. That'd be sick. I'm gonna do it. Got to get ourselves a nice, meaty, beefy Sonic Boom clip. Damn, that is one stocked payload bay, man. Holy cow. That's a lot of equipment. We are in orbit. Okay, now, the big question, right up front, can we get the dang thing out of the payload bay? Can it be done? Um, we actually already have toggle, we already have torque on this, but we need to remember to remove that after we connect to the International Space Station. But that's, uh, yeah, all systems should be go. Uh, when you turn on Keep the RCS off, SAS to SAS, and uh, you know, turn these tanks on. All right, we are ready for detachment. Hit it. All right, she's free. SAS to SAS. Docking mode on, RCS on. Control from this docking port. Actually, yeah. Okay, we're already controlling from there. Okay, easy enough. Mm -hmm. 
Is there really anything else that we need to see here? That's pretty much it. Pretty cut and dried. Main thing, of course, was can we get it out of the payload bay? And the answer is yes. It snaps right out. No crazy crakening. Easy peasy. Ignition sequence start. Daddy Nix, thank you for that follow. Welcome to the channel. Um... Yeah, we need to reload the shuttle now. So, the last little thing that we need to do before we can actually get into live mode on this mission is uh, the strutting. So, it should be pretty simple. In fact, we already have some strutting. Ooh. You know, I'll take that strut. Um, you know what? I, should, I just changed my mind. No, we will not. We're going to go with a mirror symmetry struts up top. Coming down like that. And I do not, don't want these ones involved, at least not down there. We can go ahead and get another mirror symmetry up here, coming down. That would be fine with me, and that will give us one, one crate's worth of trash to uh, clean up during an EVA. I'm curious about this. Let's go ahead and just get rid of this. We know how to get around the problem now. There's really no need for that to be in there. And I'm just, I'm not quite ready to get rid of this per se. We're getting mighty close. All right, so we've got our strutage. All right, let's go ahead and save this project. JEM pressurized module, save. And uh, make sure all of the Kerbals are out. Everybody out. Right. Close the doors and kill the reticle. Live mode on. And back into live mode we go. Let's 
Sorry about the childish name, but would you say that Kerbal is easy to get into? I just got into it and it seems so advanced. Um, it's... I wouldn't say that it's easy to get into. I absolutely would not. Kerbal Space Program is a game that it attracts two types of people. One, the space nerd. Um, and two, the builder. Um, if you like building games, such as like Minecraft, um, I personally am not a Minecraft fan, but I do like building games um, because there's a progression that all, all games to me are kind of are linear in their progression because they feed you the content. The companies fe feed you the content. Um, as soon as you're done playing the quests, you're done with the game, effectively. Unless there's building involved. If there's building involved, then the game can continue on past the content that they give you. Because you will always be able to come up with the new... Something new by, you know, with building... Oh my god, look at that. That's... Uh, why does it do that? Anyway. So, yeah, this game attracts two two different types of players uh, the space nerd because of its space aspect and the builder because of the building aspect um, but if you're one of those two people that likes to build or is big into space stuff or both maybe um, then you're going to you're gonna enjoy this game but as far as the cont as far as content is concerned um, you won't like this game if you're not a person who has a good imagination. Like, the second that you get to the moon, you're going to stop playing. If you don't have a good imagination, because that's basically like, okay, what's the most reasonable goal for a person to get to playing this game? And the, fr and the answer is, of course, building a rocket that can get to the moon and return. And most people, as soon as they do that, as soon as they're able to accomplish that, they quit the game. Like, like a switch. But, if you like doing end game stuff and wrestling with the Kraken and uh, doing stuff like this, then it can take up a hell of a lot of your time. And it is a lot of fun. can be a lot of fun. For people with imagination. But it's not for everyone. And for God's sake, I know we have somebody in chat right now and I don't want to poke on, uh, fun at them, but... Um, if you don't own this game and you're thinking about buying this game, do not get it on console. <laughs> Whatever you do. I mean, if you have to get it on console and you absolutely love this game, then go for it. But otherwise, get yourself the PC version. It is a billion times better. The port on console is god-awful. Yeah, it's very limited. Um, oh, Christ, we're in live mode here, I just realized. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead. We need to get back to the Space Center in order to choose a, choose a crew for this flight, but everything is already here. Our rocket has got the payload in, attached, strapped down. It's on its launch tower. Our launch tower re, uh, arm is retracting it doesn't need to be at this point uh, it's actually better at this point that the arm be retracted because if it's sleezed if it's physics sleezed on approach with the uh, whatever vehicle we choose to drive our astronauts to the pad with then it could kraken into the um into the shuttle and i i absolutely can see that happening so where we're at right now is the wise approach Arm retracted, ready to go. Gunter's actually out there, so he won't be seeing the astronauts to the pad, but he will be seeing them from the tower to the um, to the orbiter, which is in itself pretty cool. Can you go beyond the moon? Yes, especially if you're on PC. 
If you're on PC, you can download mods that you can go to other solar systems. Hey, Perenstein! Hello, hello? Good eye, Cobra. Yes, you can absolutely go beyond the moon. But I was just saying for your normal gamer, um, the person who buys Call of Duty on day one, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, the gamer, is uh, who's a gamer gamer at heart, and not a builder gamer, per se, or a space nerd, they'll play this game and they'll get to the moon, and as soon as they get to the moon, they'll just, they quit. They'll utterly quit playing the game right then and there. That's exactly how it goes down. I guarantee it. But, yeah, there's Mars, there's moons around Mars. You can go really crazy and go endgame content like what uh, uh, like we, what we do with uh, colonization stuff. You can try and build uh, bases, and there's, there's no limit. The only limit is your own imagination. And that's why I say this game isn't for everybody, because a lot of people don't like using their imagination for gameplay. They want to be... They want to be fed a storyline. They want to have linear gameplay. They want to have a target that they put a reticle on and they shoot. There's nothing wrong with those things. I love those things. It's just, uh, yeah. So, what are we going to do for our... to take our astronauts to the pad? I bet those cops have got squats. Squats? So, let's see. I'm quite attached to the um, limo. Of course, we, we have to launch another limo. Until we get bored of it. Uh, L for limo. There we are. Limo V2A2, show me. Um, now, there is one thing I remember when going into this build before we choose our astronauts and launch them. I wanted to move the chairs closer to the doors. That way we can see... Most importantly, we can see our Kerbals through the windows better. Oh, no, don't pull that. We want to pull the the node pieces that it's connected to. Let's pull that like, maybe like that will look good. And in the back, most importantly in the back, we want to see people partying through this window. Way over. Oh, snap! Pernstein! Very generous of... Very generous of you, hooking up uh, Daddy Nix with that subscription. Enjoy your new emotes, your ban hammer, and uh, your go button. And thank you very much, Pernstein, for being so generous. You are awesome. Okay, now these chairs here. Let's pull them back a bit. little bit more maybe and over whoa what the I got hit twice with that Where did you, uh... What the... That sounded as though... Is, do I have looping audio going on here? That check, check, check. No? Huh.
That's weird. Somehow we got the notification come up twice. Maybe it gives me a, a second notification through Streamlabs chatbot? I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, thank you. Again, for the hundred... Oh no, that was bits. You did. You dropped bits. Okay. I am a fool. Yeah. Hitting us up with a hundred biddies. Very cool. That notification was nowhere near as loud, was it? I need to get in there and change all of that stuff around. Freshen it up, get new notifications. Starchface likes the notifications that scare the hell out of me. pretty good okay so let's save this right there and uh, we need to get ourselves some astronauts on board So, first off, let's get the driver. Eduardo's our driver. And, um... One of Wendt's crew can assist him. And now we need Kerbalage. Pad crew can go in the back to assist some of Wendt's crew. And now... The Forge. Okay, so our pilot for this mission is going to be Lurrod, and we got a scientist, Isabel's, um, Jordi LaForge, and um, Traven. Actually, we're going to replace Traven with another engineer. So we're a little bit shy upstairs on engineers, so time can go ahead and go again. There we go. There's our crew. Let's go.
Right. Let's go in here and make sure that the helmets are off on all of our pad crew and Wentz crew and that the only people back here who are wearing helmets are the actual astronauts. Which it may... Nope, this is Wentz crew. So uh, that's it. Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. Open the window. All right, now we'll see if we're going to pop a tire at that same world seam over here. Um, this time we're actually going to go up the left-hand side of the crawler track as opposed to the the right-hand side and see if it doesn't blow out one of our tires again. Yeah, that's much better. Definitely. Looks all swag back there. <laughs> Might be able to pull that one just a little bit closer to the door. But these ones are perfect now. That's nice. I mean, I'll pull this chair back a little bit as well. Snuggle them up just a little bit tighter. Eduardo's driving like he's drunk right now. Wee. <laughs> uh. A shuttle coming into view now that is really cool um, if it was actually at the launch site uh, or the launch pads set right on the launch pad then we wouldn't be able to see it until we pass this but because it's raised up we actually can see it over top of mission control <laughs> Awesome. Can't okay, going over some world seams here. Don't blow a tire.
Okay, so we're going nine meters a second now. And we're approaching that nasty world scene. We should have actually taken a right here and then come down that way. Because in order to make this turn, we're going to have to go up onto the grass. So there's the world seam in question right here. Are we going to get a blowout? Front two tires are over. It's the back. Oh, we made it this time. It, it's always this wheel that gets the worst of it seems but uh looks as though we're over it cool it could also just be the other side as well that's uh, maybe just a tiny bit sharper Approaching another world seam here. We're going about eight or so meters a second. Alright, no worries. Yeah, that was a very gentle seam. There's your money shot. There's your thumbnail. Oh no, we're going over the edge. I didn't turn in time. So to get this just right, we want to come over here and swing a Yui. Actually, it would have been better if we followed the road. But the idea is to get as close to this thing as possible and then cut. Yeah, we're going to have to do a five-point turn here. We really do need to stick to the road. It's going to help this process a whole lot. 
Because if we were straight back there, then... Or maybe pass it and then get straight coming at it this way. I come straight at this thing. And then once we get about to where we're at here, we make ourselves a turn. that. Ooh, stop. There you go. That's pretty darn close. Oh, another thing. Oh, damn. I forgot about this issue. And in fact, this may be a deal breaker here. That's right. I forgot all about that. We may have to revert this. Because, well, got a Kerbal that's stuck. Might be able to get her unstuck. But yeah, that's... Uh, we need to push the seats down. I forgot about that. It's actually wrecked the roof here. have to do the drive again which is a damn shame but I do want to solve this right now I absolutely do because we're just gonna forget so let's do it we're gonna go ahead and revert this uh, this drive back to this space plane hangar so that we can solve this problem once and for all I completely forgot about that we didn't have any of that issue interestingly enough the last time we used the well we weren't getting people out that's the reason why we didn't have the problem. All we were doing, we were picking Kerbals up. We weren't trying to get them out. And I don't feel as though we'll need very much at all. Just pull those seats in just the tiniest bit and that should uh, should solve the problem one other thing that uh, we're going to do as well we're gonna solve we're gonna solve the issue of the chairs and we're gonna reload the game as well So, yeah, this needs to be down. I'll bring it all the way down to the. I wanted, you know, we put them on this beam to raise them, 
for cosmetic purposes and now we're seeing pra for practical purposes it's no good bring everything back down Now for the driver's seat, it's a little bit more important to be where he is. We still have our crew in there? We do. Good. So we don't have to select everybody. Now we're just launching to get a test in here. I'm still going to reload the game. But I feel as though we can squeeze one last little drop of lifeblood out of this this load Okay, we're gonna do just a quick test here to see. Man, they really low. They're really low. I wonder if the you know what the helmet having the helmet on probably makes a bit of a difference. Um, first off, go ahead and put the brakes on, and let's take a look at. Uh, we'll leave the seat here with this guy, and he's fine. No problem. He popped out. No, no worries. Um, Had to switch all the way over here. Now, take a look at somebody with a helmet. And I did see the helmet clip through just the tiniest bit, but it didn't look... I mean, obviously, we're... It's okay, but... As to say that it would be okay. After a drive. But we'll just keep popping some of these dudes out. Eh. Feels alright. Wish we weren't so damn low in the car.
it is what it is. We're going to sacrifice a little bit of uh, looking cool for a bit more functionality. Because I really hate having our Kerbal's heads clip into the ceiling when we let go of the of the seats. That just, that's no bueno. That's a deal breaker, so... Uh, but this looks good. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take this, bring it back into the space plane hangar. And... Uh, as far as Eduardo's seat, we brought it down just the tiniest bit. It doesn't look too bad. And, uh, like I said, I don't think it's as big a deal with Kerbals with no helmets. I could be wrong. The helmet, it's possible that the helmet is 100% cosmetic in terms of physics and uh, like hitbox and whatnot, but. We're rolling with it. All right, Pernstein. Yeah, you have yourself a good evening. Thank you for the uh, for the subs and the bits. Always appreciated. You have yourself a good evening. Wave. <laughs> Yeah. Save this and we're going to reload the game right here. Quit to the main menu. Get back some of this RAM. I said I was going to... I was going to double up our RAM on this computer as kind of a Christmas present to the stream, to myself. Um, and I looked into that. I was about to press the pay button when I thought, you know what, I'll bet that the RAM is probably matched and that there's no, there isn't just one stick of RAM in this thing. So I opened it up and sure enough, it is in fact matched. So I would have to effectively throw away the RAM that we have in it and get two 16 gig sticks in order to get a uh, 16 gig upgrade, which just like, that sucks. I was looking to buy just one 16 gig stick and that wouldn't have been, that would have been fine, you know, that would have been in, uh, doable. It was like 70 or something bucks for a 16 gig stick, but in order to actually get a 16 gig upgrade, I'll need to buy two 16 gig sticks to remove both of the 8 gig sticks that are in currently. I don't know if I'm ready for that kind of financial commitment. I mean, this machine is, it's still a good machine. It's probably worth it, dude. I mean, we're talking i7 here. It's still a good processor. It's still good video card still a good machine man it's worth it talking 140 maybe 100 and 160 buck upgrade to get another 16 gigs damn no oh, man ah oh, i hate matched memory that is so stupid that is the dumbest thing ever why this is why i'll tell you this is why Mm-hmm. 
Nine gaming. Hello, hello. What's up, dude? We are back and we can launch up this this limo I have to reselect our crew but we can uh, get the limo back on the runway and drive these kerbals to the launch pad <laughs> should I just take the auto save why not what could possibly go wrong all right, Eduardo, where are you? Where's Fast Eddie? There you are. Okay, and... Uh, recovery crew, no. There we go, Wentz crew. And uh, Wentz crew in the back. Lurrod was gonna be our pilot. right we were gonna send a Star Trek character Jordy LaForge LaForge implode I send implode. She wasn't originally gonna be on this uh, mission, but I saw her name and she's going. Okay, so we've got two engineers. Let's make it a heavy engineer run. Let's get three engineers. Surprise. And why not fill it out? Finished. Get get every seat. All right, cool. Let's go. Three 
What do you know? Everybody's actually all set up properly. Astronauts the got their helmets on and everybody else doesn't, so we know who's who easily. Uh, go ahead and open up the window. Okay, so we need to drive over there again, but it should be a bit faster now as I expect uh, we'll have a higher frame rate. I could raise those seats up somehow or something. I was thinking if we could take this seam and bring it down perhaps, like lower the lower the edge of the window, then it would look better. Then we'd have to do the whole car. It is what it is, sometimes. We're in speed run mode now. I got the pedal to the metal. Punch it, Eduardo. Everything short of lighting up the uh, the exhaust. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> We're not gonna light the exhaust. right over here there we 
go. That's how we take that corner. And here comes the nasty seam. Is it going to hurt us? Okay. Nope. It was gentle. Very, very gentle. We're going pretty fast, too. All right. Pedal to the metal. Okay, got a world seam up here. Don't expect anything though. Nada. Okay, now do take the road. This, uh, I do believe, will help us. well as being immersive and cool. As you guys know me, immersion is number one. Dude, that is, that's awesome. So if we pass and then turn, Still have the problem of those lights. Um, could actually go and turn them off. Since this is a, this is in fact the same tower, we didn't re-render this tower or anything. Turn off some of those damn lights, man. We don't need. Uh, don't need all that crap. What's this other one? Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, here, here we go. Get rid of that one. There. Okay, now we can get our Kerbals up to the orbiter. Don't clip. Don't clip. Nice. Didn't clip. There's a way that we 
if we exit and while we're falling or just before we fall if we jump then they'll like fall but they won't fall if that makes any sense <laughs> Who's next? Blue Rod. Almost. Backwards. Backwards, Jack. Okay. Who's next? LaForge. Let's go. He was about to do like a, a triple toe loop out the door. <laughs> and implode. Nice. <laughs> Triple Lutz. Double toe loop. I believe that's everybody. Transfer these dudes on up. And Gunter, yeah, Gunter's down there too. Should it be everybody? Let's go ahead and extend the access arm. Where's the cal for it? There it is. Extend the access arm and Gunter, we can get him out to assess the safety of the situation. Mr. Went, your assessment, please. He says, this deck up here would be mighty cool if we had a barbecue. That's his assessment at the present time. Stand by for updates.
Another assessment is, is he hasn't turned on the lights, too. We're in live mode here. All right. Live mode lights are on. James Lovell Poggers. <laughs> Hell yeah. Jim Lovell in my chat. I have a Kerbal named after you. All right, so Gunter says it's clear. Bring on the Kerbals. Oh, almost tripped over that seam there. So it bubbled up. But this is a reused tower here. First time 
in our career of Kerbal Space Program that we're able to actually legitimately, bona fide, reuse launch equipment. We didn't pick it up at, at all. It's uh, We launched, it stayed here, and then we launched another one, so it's pretty cool. Oh, you can see the sagging. Dude, it looks really sagged, but... Boy, it looks really sagged. Hardcore. But we're still able to get on board. Yeah, look at this. It's definitely not as strong as a freshly launched <laughs> tower. It is... It's in need of refurbishing. But just the fact that we're able to even do this even once is quite appalling to me. Maybe appalling isn't the right word. Extravagant. <laughs> Maybe that's not the right word either. Extraordinary. There's the word. It's quite extraordinary. You know, I don't think that it would have sagged as hard if we strutted this this tunnel. Even just a couple of like cross struts um, along this thing would probably shore it up quite a lot. Yeah, if it was rigid to itself here, then that would really, 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 really help. In fact, you can see a bow from the top right there. Absolutely. The tunnel is bowing. But it'll work for one more launch at least. We'll probably recover it after this because I do want to make that change but we'll see uh as we continue with our launch tower build um maybe we can get the sucker omega strong and have it be able to withstand two three four maybe up to ten launches wouldn't that be sick 
would be crazy. Okay, Gunter, need to get him out of there. Also, a couple of other things are traditional um, equipment transfer where Gunter gives everybody uh, an EVA tank and tools and all that stuff. I still need to fill these things up with things so that we can do that. Really put the finishing touches on this tower. Alright, we are go for Orbiter Access Arm Retract. And we're also going to... We're going to drive Eduardo's car a little bit away because I see that it started to slide the tiniest bit here and last thing I want is for this thing to crake in inside of this because it's it we need this out here the car needs to stay out here so we'll just pull it a little bit away I don't want this to become a thing maybe next time we won't park as close Yeah, you know, honestly, we don't need to get that damn close. Yeah, we'll pull this thing on over, like, right about there will be fine. I definitely want it closer, but uh, when we drive up, we'll, I don't know, get a little arc and maybe park it, like, about here-ish, that way. It's closer, yet not too close that it's going to slide, cause problems. Immersion Maximo.
reset all of our stuff. Crazy. Roll, roll, right. All right, so let's take a look here. Throttle limit 58, uh, orbital 5200, 180, 180, 0 0.7, 2.1 to 116, 50 degrees. We are go for launch. Staging the screen. Uh, access arm is almost fully retracted now. As soon as that happens, then we can get into time acceleration and get into the window. Currently, all systems are go. And this is probably the last time this tower is going to be used. <laughs> Hella big time sagging on the access arm. It's been pounded. Um, this thing has been here. We've been flying helicopters past it, planes past it, all kinds of stuff, you know. Uh, we've been accidentally tabbing back to it while we're you know to getting our recovery vehicles all that kind of stuff is happening so all that physics leasing is just hammering this thing so it to be in the shape that it's in is actually uh, quite astonishing all right so the red lights have uh, turned off that means the access arm is all the way back we are go for time acceleration We're approaching our window now. little bit further <clears throat> all right right about there I would say All right, we are go for launch at this time. Don't see anything wrong. All 
I got that bad feeling, but we're going to go ahead with launch because I don't see anything wrong. So let's do it. Disable performance mode and initiate launch pull. All stations going to go for terminal count, beginning with mission assurance. Mission assurance is go. DC. DC is go for terminal count. GC. GC is go. SIS-1. SIS-1 is go. SIS-2. SIS-2 is go. CC. CC go. NAV. NAV is go. Flight software. Flight software go. Mission software. Mission software is go. IT. IT is go. Recovery. Recovery go. RC. RC go. OSM. OSM go. Rock. Rock is go. LC is go. DC, you are go to enable the terminal count auto sequence. All stations, terminal count auto sequence is enabled. All right, here we go. T minus 20 seconds. Guidance is internal. T minus 10 seconds. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two. One, launch. We've cleared the tower. Thirty meters a second. Forty meters a second. Approaching roll. We are go for roll. Roll complete. We are go for throttle up. One hundred meters a second. One ten. We are go for pitch. Vehicle is supersonic. <clears throat> Approaching first stage booster flame out separation main computer override. Vehicles Mach 2. Flame out, separation, main computer, override, complete. We may be just a little bit too far north, yeah. Let's go ahead and turn it just a tad bit.
right, so we got ourselves an Apple Apps of 180 going to 270. 200, 210, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and shut down. We are go for the pirouette maneuver. SAS off. Come on, baby, roll. Roll, roll. That was really good down the line. We didn't have enough roll. That was... Oh, that was probably the best pirouette we have ever done. Just needed a tad bit more roll. That was really, really good. And we didn't even have a third thrust on that. We did two, did that with two thrusts. Getting better at it. All right, up we go. Inclination's kind of pretty whack, but oh well. We'll be fine. That's as far as we go with the external tank. All right, we are go for external tank jettison. Hit it. Okay, main computer shutdown, or main engine shutdown. Ohm's computer engaged. RCS off. We are go for... We are go for orbital injection. Hit it. We are in orbit. Okay, and 100 kilometer periapsis shut down. GG. All right. We are now go to assess the situation for starters. This cut is going to be too deep. Um, let's go ahead and continue on with this burn at the time being. Get ourselves a bit more periapsis. Uh, how far back are we pushing this? Uh, it's not coming back that fast, so we'll keep it uh, at this angle. Steady as she goes, just get us uh, a little bit slower relative to the station. Don't want to pass it on the first pass when we're doing our plane change, so. pushing this back. Okay, we're still only says 72 back here. Alright, 
that looks that looks good. We shouldn't pass it. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and select the target, and we want to match planes. Uh, it's a little bit pricey. Turn to that node and prepare for the uh, inclination correction burn. Bring open the ohms controller, get that put over here. Take a look at our consumables here. All right. Just starting to burn the electric charge. Wow, look how close this uh, intersection is. Um, and that'll be after... Okay, so... Cool! We're all set up for a home and transfer burn right after this. How nice is that? Go ahead and give me this node. 79.5 meters. It was a pretty trash orbit, or trash uh, launch, I have to, have to say. We started a little bit too late, and... Um... We, we went to make a bit of a change during the launch uh, in the atmosphere that felt a little bit dangerous at the time. I'm not going to lie. It's like, oh, uh, we pulled a little bit hard to push it north. Or, or no, it was pull it south. Excuse me. And uh, that maneuver could have been dangerous. It, I mean, it was dangerous. But it uh, luckily nothing bad happened. Yeah, that's definitely not our best launch attempt by far. Our current personal best being 12.5 meters inclination change. Which is pretty darn good. We get a burn over here. Two point one. Point four meters. There's our home and transfer, 11.4 meters. Go ahead and turn to that node and prepare for the home and transfer burn. Rather look like the look of this payload in here. It's beefy, you know, it's like, we aren't carrying no bullshit today. We aren't carrying just a little, little bitty chintzy module this thing is serious all right home and transfer burn 11.4 meters hit me
There's our Holman transfer, 0.3 kilometers now. Null the velocity once we get there. We're going to be going 70 meters a second, so a little bit fast. But uh, the timing was fantastic. Okay, so... 16 minutes till closest approach. We'll be going 70 meters a second. Let's go. Right. 10 minutes till closest approach. Should be able to see our targets. There it is. Fifty kilometers out now. Forty. Thirty kilometers. And before we get much closer, we're going to come out of time acceleration, get an F5 right here. Before we get anywhere close to render distance. All right, now continue on. Twenty meters out, twenty kilometers out, rather. Okay, ten kilometers out. Five kilometers, and I feel like I want to burn a little bit of this speed. It's just a tad fast for my taste. <laughs> All right, 20 meters a second relative now. Two point four, two point three. This is render distance. There's the stutter. And it looks as though by our trajectory we should be flying past it on the top side. So if the planet, yeah, it's down there, we should be... It doesn't look that way. That's why our trajectory says we should be, though. It's lying. We're totally coming in underneath of it. Absolutely. Hmm. What the hell is it thinking? That doesn't make sense. Look at that. See, there's the target marker down there. Here's the horizon, you know. It's saying we're over top of it. That doesn't make any sense, though. It's not. That's not true, because the planet's underneath of us. Am I reading all of this stuff wrong? Was that anti target or something? Okay, so we can go ahead and kill all these nodes. Don't need any of that crap anymore. Go ahead and turn us to the. Uh, well, it won't even let me turn to the retrograde marker. You rat bastard. Fine, I'll. F fly it myself. 
Alright, kill this last little bit of speed. Radio. Let's uh, tab over to the space station now. And of course, we need to wait for it to get uh, oriented back onto its proper attitude. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, <coughs> yeah, I'm not sure. We could keep this in its current state, or we could mash it on down so that it's flush. Well, just we'll we'll do this install, and then we'll do the repositioning of this module to the Zenith side of our current uh, payload, and we'll judge it then. If it looks like crap, then this may get dumped we may I don't know put this in there we could go ahead and put this in our payload bay and take it with us bring it home as trash um, if we don't like it bring it home to get it refitted and then bring it back out again that's kind of a cool idea This is actually the last mission before the final solar wing, chronologically speaking. Now, if we take this home, if we take this thing home and we decide that we want to replace this piece, I say we do it like immediately, like tonight, because I don't want the, the, there to be one more mission. <laughs> this should be the last mission before we get the last solar wing. I'd hate to have to push that back for one more. One more stream or one more day or whatever. We're so close.
almost on the prograde marker and then it'll really get serious into getting the roll. be launching modules on on dragon will we could be launching modules on falcon per se I mean not not dragon but I was just thinking if we wanted to refit this module um, So we cut out this flange and take the uh, the docking port and get it really flush to the to the surface of this, so that when it docks to our module, which is in our payload bay, uh, and it, it'll be over here. When that when we dock to it, then it'll be really really close. But then the top piece also looks goofy as well. I want to. I totally do want to redo this thing. It sucks, but. We could leave it here and continue on with the regular STS missions, but set this mission up to be launched on like a SpaceX flight. Say like a Falcon. I mean, it's not so big that it would require a Falcon Heavy, but that would be kind of cool. And we do like a Falcon 9 launch with this little, little Wico module just for fun. That could be cool. I mean, the SpaceX stuff that gets here wouldn't be all that impressive, but the launch would be really fun. I think that's what we'll do. And then this piece, how? what are we going to do with this piece? I guess it would be down to a shuttle to bring it home but I say we do that um, after this will be down the road a ways um, we'll slate up a mission that will have a shuttle up here and on its way home it will take this thing home with it and land and then the very next mission will be a SpaceX mission where we launch with a Falcon 9 this re revised version of this and then it can fly up here and uh, do that mission. And then its booster can just, uh, well, burn itself up in the atmosphere like it, like it would. I like it. I like it. Sounds like a lot of fun. Falcon 9. We need to make a new launch tower for Falcon 9. We have the launch tower, actually, for our cruise, so that basically means dragon. But also on top of that, I want to have a strong back. I want to. We attempted it once, very lightly. Um, but I want to reattempt to build a strong back setup for our Falcon. essentially means building a strong back you know a strong back for our dragon as well
The chat rules. Uh, it depends on if it's carrying a coconut. Did I mess STS-24? No, we're in the middle of STS-24 right now. The shuttle is right over here. And 8K, you're correct also, but you've got, you've given the wrong answer. The wrong, that's the wrong answer, but it's, uh, but it's also correct. <laughs> It's, a, it's not a question of how it grips it. <laughs> uh, that's not funny. That's not funny! It could grab it by the husk. Yes, 8K, you know your Monty Python. So, you can be our friend. Thumbs up. Much rejoicing. And it was much rejoicing. Okay, we are almost on the proper attitude. It's got a few more degrees to go. And then we can get our shuttle over here and get it docked. I still don't even know where we are planning on docking. Plan it, plan any of this crap. Um, I guess it only makes sense that we would be on the forward PMA with our pay, uh, payload bay off to the port side. That would, I guess, be the logical go to option. Pretty much, yeah. I don't see a reason why not to do that, except for our payload needs to come out. Now, hold on. I don't want to switch when we're almost on the proper attitude. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and switch over here. Um, the docking port that we're going to be dealing with is actually in the... is facing aft, and that's that's actually not... It's not really... Con conducive to being docked forward and facing port because we'll have to take the payload completely out and flip it all the way around but I guess you know it doesn't really make any difference because we'll have to do that anywhere doesn't doesn't really matter Yeah, I say we go ahead and take up this. We'll take up this docking port here, and uh, face face our payload bay to port. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and change over our control from point. We want to be controlling from there, and we want to be roughly facing radial out with that control point. Orbital, please. And we...
we need to extend this tunnel. And lock it, of course. Strut it. Um, actually, I'm... That's incorrect. This is incorrect. This We don't want to be facing radial out. We want to be facing retrograde. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Retrograde and then rolled with our payload bay facing... port like that oh slow there you go like something like that okay now we can go ahead and get a little uh, approach here just uh get a little bit of docking mode going on rcs on and some forward thrust uh, how are we holding... Okay, we're holding retrograde. Sure. Um, that's our orbital retrograde. Yeah, that should be static enough, I think. for clicking that derp 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 Let's take SAS, have this thing control us, SAS retrograde orbital. That way we can change our tr uh, change this to the target. And now we've got a better idea of exactly which direction of travel we've got. There we go. That's better. The tunnel is without a doubt finished extending, so we'll go ahead and lock that, and then we want to uh, auto strut that, and we are go for docking. As soon as we get there, um, we're going to be going way too fast on this vector. Slow us down. And push up there. Backwards. Mm-hmm. 
up. Go up. We're really pussyfooting it too. We're 1.2 meters a second here. I can get above it. The ISS looks weird with only three solar arrays. Well, it didn't in 2008. It was actually... <laughs> this is what it looked like in 2008. But yeah, I agree. Um, when we finally get this fourth one, and this is the last mission before it, the very next mission is our fourth solar array, finally. Um, I cannot wait. Because the... The station will finally look complete, even though it's actually a long way from being complete. I know exactly what you mean. What modules is this? This is the pressurized module for the um, JEM. It's the Japanese um, experiment module. So this is the big part. This is the the big piece to it all. Okay, we can go ahead and set the forward docking port as our target now. And uh, RCS off. We can change our SAS to negative parallel and our roll is 38. You know what? Our roll is fine. We're just going to I think we're we're flat enough. I don't even care. Our translations don't feel correct for some reason. It could just be the speed at which we're approaching. It's just uh just the speeds I'm thinking.
captured. All right. RCS off. Find controls off. Docking indicator off. Here we are. You can definitely see our roll was very fudged. We're we're off. I <laughs> probably uh, at least one or two degrees. Ring retracted, hard capture confirmed. Nice. Is there another module that uh, goes currently? Isn't there something that goes where that Ford PMA is now? No. Where we currently are is, you know, in 2008, this is how everything should have been. Um, I, at one point, there's the forward PMA got relocated from the forward port on Destiny before the um, before the Harmony module came. So it got moved up and out of the way. Um, I believe they stowed it on the Zenith port. They just moved it up and, and stuck it on the Zenith port up here and then after the harmony module got installed it got put on the front again so everything is i believe where it should be to my knowledge everything's copacetic Oh, what do you know? We can actually transfer our Kerbals. Oh, you know why? It's because we reloaded the game. This is, uh... Okay, LaForge is going to go on this EVA right here. So, we're gearing him up to go outside. So, Jordy LaForge is ready for his first EVA, his first spacewalk. And we're going to fly on over to the payload bay and undo the strutting. Before we do that, we have a... Everything looks copacetic here, so I don't see any reason why we shouldn't. Go ahead and get an F5 right there. That's right now, but eventually the PMA gets moved to a module. I'm not sure where it goes. I'm playing this all by ear. You know, we're just going one mission at a time here, quite frankly. Um, and we've been lucky. <laughs> I have to say, you know, in doing it this way, uh, we've run, run across a couple of problems. 
one of them being really big and almost uh, we almost had to redo the whole mission but I'll point it out to you right here this is a clear example of what can happen if you're doing it mission by mission and not all in one go see how this clips into that I still don't even know how we were able to max make that happen but somehow the game when we were like it was obvious when we got here with the modules like oh god this isn't gonna work and we we went for it anyway and the game was forgiving so that's happened to us a couple of times um, but it's a lot funner this way just yeah I know quite a few people will go and they'll build the International Space Station in the in the space plane hangar and have the whole thing to have it completely parted out all in so it's like and that that seemed kind of like eating all the frosting off of your cake before you eat the cake kind of thing to me you know it's like writing the end of your book before you f decide you know how to get there so anyway it isn't without f uh, its flaws though obviously but yeah I have no idea where this PMA ends up in in the final build no clue I think it it has to stay here because we have uh, footage you know there's uh, there's all kinds of uh, SpaceX uh, dragon animations showing it going to the International Space Station this is where it docks and it shows this docking uh, this PMA forward so I think it does stay here to my knowledge it stays here indefinitely that's actually my that's my guess The way the truss is attached to the pressurized segments hurts my brain because I forget there's no gravity, Kappa. <laughs> well, that's not entirely true. Um, it's microgravity, but for the most part. People always say that and it's it's not it's not entirely accurate. In fact, I do I do believe although it's not one can imagine zero gravity, um, but the truth is nobody will ever experience zero gravity. Period, because gravity affects you to infinity. So like you may be able to like equal it out I suppose one can imagine that but like mathematically speaking should be like just next to a misnomer to say zero gravity because we will we don't have no reference point to find zero gravity I guess if that makes any sense because we don't we truly don't know what direction the sun is traveling I mean I guess we can we can calculate all of that I guess a big brain could go back and say okay this is exactly where the Big Bang happened and then be able to calculate out exactly where zero would be I don't know maybe I'm overthinking things <laughs> it happens <laughs> <laughs> I am gravity. -ha 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 -ha. Uh, 
Um, it says in the front, but the new module eventually goes between it and Harmony. Yeah, um, so they'll remove... There's another module that gets put on the front? I didn't know that. So we get one more jump, huh? The forward PMA comes off again, and there's one more module that gets put forward, and then it gets put on the for uh, on the front again. I can see that. Stuff gets moved all over the place. Like, obviously, the the number one key to the mission is get it in orbit and get it to the station once it's there you know it's uh, it's nice to have your missions all kind of bundled up so that you can knock them out you know quickly but the truth is some of that stuff needs to kind of hang out there you know for a while and shift it around kind of like the PMA or this uh, solar panel here the solar uh, solar wing how it was originally on Z1 Here's another thing to think about as well. Um, in terms of gravity and trajectories and stuff, who's to say the Big Bang was actually stable when it happened? I mean like a fixed point and it kapow all went exactly outwards. What if the Big Bang was actually in motion when it happened as well? Like as one huge visualize a massive massive ball of TNT not fixed it when it explodes but going in wonder going in some direction Also, when you install the JEM, the module on the top of Harmony gets attached. Yes, this module right here gets relocated. We were going to do that, like, right now, actually. We were going to install the, the pressurized module and then relocate this thing. But we're also talking about replacing this entirely because I don't like how we built it. Um, we can do better, and I was planning on, at some point... We're, it's going to be a ways. We're st we're going to continue on with the continue with the uh, um, space station in its chronological order. Um, but at some point, we may add another. We're going to add another mission where we take this and we're going to put it in a shuttle, and the shuttle will bring this home. And on a SpaceX flight as Falcon 9, we're going to launch a revised version of this. But yeah, this uh, this thing does get moved. It's gonna get moved today. It's gonna get moved right now. In fact, Jordy LaForge is already suited up, ready to go out the door. Hit it. Get this mission underway. Yep. I don't I can't remember what the hell this thing is called. It does have a, a brief acronym. But yeah, we're gonna remake.
make that thing. <laughs> so let's see here. Uh, we probably should. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Let's go over here and grab one of these external stowage platform containers. We need more soyas up here. This is the soyas is uh, it's kind of our escape system soyas for the last crew on board, but we need to get more soyas launched up here. Make sure this thing's empty. Okay, it is cool. Mm-hmm. Right. Um Yeah, let's get the aft struts first. So, our payload is now free. Well, free to get undocked anyway. And we've got a container level full of trash. No soy is to take it to, so we'll just take it on over here to the external stowage platform. And stow it. And that, uh, I believe, is it. That's all we need to do for this part of the mission. Go ahead and drink that beer. Drink a beer. Eat some chocolate. And you are ready to come back on board. I'm excited for this next Canada arm, too. We're going to send up a, the Dextry piece for the JEM. And that's going to look quite awesome, I think. Alright, next part is to take this sucker... and detach it. But before we do that, we want to go in here and make sure these uh, fuel tanks uh, turn those on. Alright, the JEM pressurized module is go for detachment. Hit it. Alright, 
It's free. RCS uh, docking mode on, RCS on, SAS. SAS on, RCS on, okay. Find the right vector to get out. Perfect. Okay, this is gonna be a little, this is gonna be a tight little maneuver we got going here. <laughs> uh, gotta be ready to compensate for when this thing kind of throws us off course. So it's going to, for sure. Go ahead and stop, slow it down. I'm not thrusting the way that I think I am. No, I'm not, okay. Let's do it. RCS off. Um, yeah, it does look like it's flat. Okay. Controlling from here. Yeah, we are. All right, there we go. Ooh. Oh, we bumped. <laughs> oh, darn. RCS. Catch it. Catch it. That was that was really close to being a work of art until we bumped. <laughs> everything was going great until everything went wrong. Exact. That's absolutely wrong. It's not. That's backwards. Or n no, 90. Okay, so. RCS off. That's wrong! Why did it turn me like that? That doesn't even make the slightest bit of sense at all. It, that couldn't have been more wrong. What the hell? Our target changed somehow. What the hell was that? We're gonna bump again.
is it not rolling to... Oh, all right. RCS off. Roll. This is when it went wrong. Okay, so yeah, we need to go to 180 to get this thing rolled prop. Why is it doing that? It keeps changing our freaking target. I changed the roll and all of a sudden Okay, so this time we're just going to see it beho beforehand. Okay, are we on the right target this time? Okay. There. Oh my god, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Alright, let's go ahead and get it docked. Now that we're finally on the right attitude. Fuck's sake. captured 270 flat all right there it is RCS is off fine controls are off docking indicator that was wacky I don't know why every time that I was clicking on that it just kept like changing our target and then it would turn that could have been really terrible I mean if we were bumping each time that that would have happened or that that happened man would have been all over the place anyway that is done um, we do have to it does look as though we're going to well, I don't know we might be able to actually move this thing without cleaning up without having to clean up this stuff first Yeah, that is the next mission at this point. Is to, um, oh, before we go any further, turn off that torque wheel. Disable that torque wheel, baby. Killed that torque wheel. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, is there anything else that's... Nope. That should be it. Okay. Um, RCS tanks on that module are, are still on. Go ahead and turn these ones off. And we are good to go ahead and... Detach this module, I believe. Our electric charge is good. Mono propellant, we just looked at it, was good. So let's go ahead and do it. Undock. Okay, that module is free. And we are go for the relocation. SAS to SAS. And uh, we want to control from this bottom one. Facing radial. And we're targeting this one over here. 
Make sure there's no force acquire on that. Shouldn't be. Okay, looks good. Give me the docking indicator so we can see what roll. We're actually still on 270 roll. Okay, that works for me. Uh, SAS. Take us to 270 on the roll. We're still targeting that. Looks good. Okay, target negative parallel. Force that roll. Oh, we don't have any attitude control. We need to turn on the torque wheel. There we go. All right. RCS on, docking mode on. Relocation. Yeah, refitting this piece right here is going to be a, a really fun mission. I am looking forward to that. Now, here's a, exactly where mistakes, when you make mistakes in your build, it's really adds to the gameplay. You know, instead of being like cursing, oh my god, we made a mistake or something like that. When you, you do make a mistake, you get to fix it. That's the the joy in doing things the way that uh, that we have the way we have been doing things with the International Space Station is to just uh, get creative and how you can correct the problem in flight and whatever or conjure up a whole new mission that's good stuff you know that's fun Yeah, I think these docking ports from, like, right here, you know, these two docking ports, it would be nice if it were flush to just this piece's edge right there. It would look so much better, and it will actually save us a part. It'll save us the flange. Actually, it'll save us two parts if we put it on both sides. So I don't think the top side looks looks decent with a flange either. It should be square. Or flat. All right, just about to seal the deal on our relocation operation. There it is. Recaptured. Now, before things go crazy, we want to turn the toggle torque off on that reaction wheel, and that is mission success. Take a look at, uh, see if we can't get a decent camera angle on what we just accomplished here. Pretty much, there it is. Cheers. And so the external stowage platform for this piece gets hooked on right here, and it will fit not unlike these guys right there, but only kind of uh, on the same width of this sticking out. And then right up here, we connect a little Canada arm. Uh, just not unlike this, but it's got less parts. And just a little Canada arm cosmetic. And there you go. It's a pretty cool module. And then we need to clean 
Also, we need to, uh, we've got a EVA, which at this point we could do. We could go on EVA and clean up this garbage here, all of the, um, the autonomous controls, this grid, the thrusters, these tanks, and the, and the flight computer. There's no need to have that anymore. Up here, it's we're going to want to keep it for this. Because uh, we'll still want to relocate this piece one more time to get rid of it. Put it in a payload and take it home after a while. So, it gets to keep all of its thrusterage and whatnot. Beefy. Quite, quite beefy. Shellberry, she's uh, she came up here. She may have came up, come up here on the last shuttle mission. Not sure exactly how the hell she got up here. If it was a Soyuz or whatnot. Forge, get him out for another EVA. It's the feel good EVA here. Initiate install. Space welding. Away. We
How do these modules move around in real life? It's the Stations Canada arm. The Stations Canada arm is really freaking cool. It can, um, it can go anywhere. Uh, it inchworms. It can inchworm along the entire station and move anything around. Not to, there's not just Canada arm, right? There's Canada arm two. There's, um, there's Dextry. And then there's also, um, there's several versions of Dextry. There's actually like a, there's a version of Dextry that's on the Canada arm that fits over here. Um, and there's another one and a mobile uh, servicing platform and whatever that gets hooked onto the Dextry uh, extension onto the Canada arm as well. So Canada arm is a huge deal. Like they build, they use it for everything. They use it for grabbing uh, incoming vessels and pulling them into the docking ports. They use it for uh, moving pieces around. I mean, you name it. Everything on the station is practically done with uh, with the Canada arm. It's pretty dope. I would have... Uh, we've done as much as we could given the physics... Uh, of Kerbal Space Program with our Canada Arm 2, which is in the shuttle. And then we had, of course, our our uh, cosmetic Canada Arm that just... Um, we don't put robotic parts, as you guys all know. We don't put robotic parts on any part of the station that's going to remain in orbit indefinitely. So, thus, we could not make a bona fide Canada Arm. Um, but... Yeah, that's how they really do uh, move all the pieces around and do all the installs and stuff. Pretty sweet. How does space welding work? Because uh, in real life, uh, IRL... I'm a welder, and I can't wrap my head around it. Why? Because the electricity can't get to the ground? Um, they use... There's some method that they use on airplanes... On airplanes and, um... Well, the space station or space stations in order to uh, get the electricity to the ground. It's like a degaussing sort of effect that they use the atmosphere somehow. I don't know how exactly. But um, as far as I know, you should be able to weld in space, technically. Sure. No, because there's no way to have uh, shielding gas to protect your weld from going bad. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Shielding gas? Huh. I would say any problem could be overcome with enough ingenuity. So you say the area around the weld needs to have some sort of gas, uh, needs to be encased in some sort of gas for some amount of time before the weld becomes okay or whatever. There's got to be ways to make it happen it's not easy I guess that's that's the part of uh, to answer that question on welding in space can it be done I'm sure it can be done it's probably not easy <laughs> do they weld in space I don't know we just put it in there because uh, we needed some sort of immersion effects for our install thing, so. Yeah, space welding. 
So anyway, there you go. There's our uh, our install cooldown is complete. Our install is complete. Our EVA, we can go ahead and get these guys back on board. And I really like this airlock. I know the door, um, I've had people tell me that the door is supposed to be facing um, Nadar. So, like, technically this, the door down here is the one we should be using. But the way that we have it built is so fun. I just love this airlock. It's so good. Even if it's not technically Right. Yeah, the new module looks nice. Let's go ahead and turn on the lights now. Cheers. More science to be had. Um, let's go ahead and send some people in there. Take a look out from the window. See what the see what the window. See what we can see out the windows. Should be able to see quite well into the payload bay. Okay, this is uh. This is the harmony module. This isn't where we want to be. Yeah, this is definitely it. So you can, unfortunately we can't get like right up against the window, but you can see basically what we can see out there. You actually see our, <laughs> our Kerbal, as our astronauts silhouettes against the wall. But yeah, this is clearly the one looking into the payload bay. Oh, we can see the planet over here. That's a pretty nice view. over to her you can see the other side of the payload bay and uh, I was sort of expecting to see a bit of the International Space Station out this windows but you can't um, because we're pointed this window is pointed like directly at it but, yeah that's kind of crazy here's our um, This is the airlock that we just used to get in and out for that EVA. I forget what it's called. It's not the Piers airlock. That's the one for the, the Russian segment that's over aft over here. This is the American one. Can't remember what it's called. Freaky V, thank you for the follow. Jebediah Kerman says yes. There are a few ways of uh, welding uh, argon, other non-oxidizer around. Boy, it'd be dangerous. I don't think that uh, you know. Yeah, sparks flying on the space station. Something you really want to avoid, for sure, for sure. And 
And here we can actually get a pretty decent view. These windows don't really exist. They only exist when we snuggle up to them like this um, to look out. And on the real space station, these windows wouldn't exist either. That doesn't stop us. Nice cool view out the back here of the... There's the Piers airlock that I was talking about. What the hell is the name of the airlock that we're in? It's gonna drive me nuts. Tell me I have, I'm gonna have to look it up. Unreal. Quest. It's the Quest airlock. The everyone airlock. I think we're in the Harmony module. We got a ways until we get our cupola. That's the window everybody wants to hang out by. <laughs> but yeah, next mission. Next mission, we finally get this last solar array. Dude, it's gonna be sick. Vedsta was welded to Zarya? Really? Yikes. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't want to have been on board the ISS at that time, right? Dude. Welding isn't that dangerous, to be honest. Wear the right gear and you're good. It's more about being in an oxygen-rich environment. That's the part that scares me. Sparks flying in an oxygen-rich environment.
Yeah, welding goggles and gloves aren't going to save you if you go into a, a hyperbaric chamber, for example, and weld and it explodes. <laughs> <coughs> That's what I'm saying. But then there's also there's all sorts of different types of welding too. Like there's quite literally thousands of different types of ways to weld. Some that don't involve uh, any sort of flames at all. There's all there's all kinds of crazy chemical welding and lots and lots of ways to skin the cat. Oh, swaggered. Swaggered's here. You guys all remember Captain Jack Swaggered, right? Played by Kevin Bacon. Harmony, no, or Unity, no. Where the hell are you? Must be in here. No, she isn't there. Okay. Soyuz 6 was the first to weld in space. They screwed up and almost burnt straight through the hole. See, like I said, like <laughs> welding is dangerous sport in space. Well, we have our crew back on board, or our returning crew. We've uh, swapped a couple people out. 
Implode is going to be going back. Kel Ray from the previous mission and uh, Shell Barry and Swaggart. Swaggart's going to be our pilot. For this STS re-entry, and that should leave us uh, Jordy LaForge, um, Lou Rod, a pilot, and I'm not... Where's the last... We're missing somebody. Okay, surprise. Surprise is over in the new module. I sense the ending? No, you're wrong. You should be sensing a re-entry, because we're almost almost ready to re -do uh, undock and then do a re-entry, so... Incorrect! Banhammer. It's still pretty loud. It's still pretty loud. I'm gonna nerf it further. Yeah, the band hammer is getting the nerf hammer. Feels bad, man. We should have to toggle... This thing's actually already off. Okay, so... That and that. Disabled, disabled. We're cool, man. We are ready to do an undocking and a re-entry with this. So, let's get an F5 right here. Our crew's on board. And we want to pull up the SAS. And get ready for some craziness to go down. Craziness to ensue. All right, STS-124, you are go for undocking. Hit it. Okay, SAS to SAS. RCS on, docking mode on. Thrusting aft. Oh, can't do that yet because our control from point. All right, now thrust aft. Control from point, change. Yeah, 
Yep, next mission, man. The next mission. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, jeez. Oh. Very exciting. Docking ring retracted. We have separation. <laughs> yeah, helping us out on our call outs there. We'll learn them all. We'll, we'll, we'll get them all. <laughs> Quite a thing. Look at that. Big ass science thing right there. I'll be able to do a hell of a lot of good science with that. And we still got a ways to go. Yeah, it still gets it still gets its own this module here is privileged as all hell. I mean, it gets its own external uh, stowage platform and its own Canada arm. Like that's that's pretty privileged right there. I'm pretty sure, as far as the total um, square footage, or square meterage, or however, um, the space, that this is the, the largest pressurized module on the space station. Not just our space station, but like, all in. I have made one mistake right here, starting to realize. We didn't wait for the time. I have no idea what phase we're in right now. Actually, it looks like we're just fa we're just past phase three, so we're a little bit early, but not. It could have been a lot worse. Actually, it could have been a, a lot worse. Could have been just passing phase one, which would have been a disaster for us in terms of electric charge but as it is we lucked out the RNG Jesus was good to us here and uh, we should be okay They use solid fuel boosters to uh, to move the Falcon 9 to the launch pad. I'm kidding. <laughs> they use a catapult. That's on SRBs.
If it's a flight proven booster, it has to be trucked across the country from Florida hangar. Uh, from Florida to the hangar in Vandenberg. Yeah, transporting those things is a pain in the ass. That's why, um... Elon's absolutely got it right. Um, the launch pad right there at the uh, at the assembly line. The only thing he needs to have trucked in are, um, you know, engines from Rolls Royce, effectively, and metal, um, sheet metal. Any rocket transported by land via rail or track was limited by the Romans? Huh? I don't quite follow that thinking. What, do you, what is that? I don't understand that. That's weird. I don't know what you're saying, bro. Are you saying historically? Like, because of their road systems or something? I don't follow. All right, anyway, we are way above the station now, and uh, I would say we're pretty safe to go ahead and get a departure burn going down here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's do it. Um, SAS is to retrograde, and that's, uh, that's fine and dandy. RCS off, and... Uh, Let's do it. Departure burn. Hit it. Wave. We will be back. And when we come back, we're going to have the final solar panel for this build. Oh my god. I can't believe we finally made it. It's insane. Falcon 9 uh, will probably stay in operation long after Starship because Starship uh, won't be flying crew for a very long time. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it's going to be a long time before they can convince everybody that it's safe. Okay, switching over to the ohms controller now and we'll go ahead and plot us a re-entry corridor 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, change periopsis down to 80. All right, we say goodbye to the International Space Station. Pull the trigger on that maneuver planner and we are go for reentry corridor A. thing <clears throat> during the times of the Romans the chariots where is the station why am I not seeing the station that far away from it. It's like, should be right here. Yeah, I should be able to at least see it. So, uh, let's see. No. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know why I can't see the station. I should be able to... S Is that it? Holy cow, we were still in render distance. No way! Wow, that was we didn't get hardly anything into that uh re or that departure burn then. Cuz I would have expected generally speaking, here we go, we're should be going on to render distance shortly. There it is. That's kind of what the departure burn was supposed to prevent. Oh, Jebediah turned colors. Oh yeah? I can do that too. Check it out. Boom. There you go. I'm purple now, too. Got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. All right, so that's re-entry corridor A. We can go ahead and get into re-entry corridor B now. Circularize at periapsis. Go ahead and plot that node as soon as the game comes back to us. There it goes. Okay, I don't trust it. Remove, plot it again. Okay, show me, oh me, oh. Mm-hmm, looks good. Okay, go ahead and turn to that node and prepare for re-entry corridor B. Hit it. Red. Going red. Rig the dumb for red.
Rig the con for red. <laughs> They've gone to plaid. All right, there's reentry corridor B. Go ahead and put us on the retrograde node and we'll clean up our orbital time. Orbital information 3116. We're off by over two seconds. RCS on, docking mode on, and a forward thrust will give us what we're after here. 14.05, we're off by one thousandth. Get five con uh, fine controls. And, oh, we passed it. Packed it up just a little bit. There you go. RCS off. And we are in the lane, and we are here long before we needed to be. Um, so we'll keep a sharp eye on that electric charge. Alright, and we need to um, get the wheel. Need to get the wheel. Alright. Okay, we're at six thousand two hundred units of electric charge now. We should ju just be about passing stage or phase zero. Five thousand eight hundred units of electric charge. Okay, so we're starting to approach phase one now. 5,500. Okay, starting to come into phase. Slow it up a bit. Quite luck square. Flatten that out. Okay. One three 
zero. One two zero. Okay, here we go. One, uh, zero, seven, zero. Five, four is what I'm seeing. It's about five, four. Okay, so. <laughs> All righty then there. Four two six zero. Is fifty is twenty five seconds. Twenty five point five six. Six. Okay. So thirty four minutes, twenty five point five six seconds is what I figure. Thirty four minutes. Expensive. Thirty four minutes, what? Twenty five. Hundred and forty all in. Yeah, no biggie. Okay, so go ahead and turn to that node. You better land this damn thing. I'm staying up for this. <laughs> yeah, uh, not to put any pressure on. Now, hold on, hold on. We, we got to that thing too soon. This happened to us about two re-entries ago that we we plotted that burn before we passed it and that was that was no bueno we were too fast we were too efficient so I'll do it one more time here we were 34 minutes 34 minutes 25 34 minutes 34, 25, 26, 25, okay, alright, put us on that node, and prepare for phase re-entry, corridor A, hit it.
Got a blast. Happy streaming. Thanks, man. You have a good one. Yeah, we'll try our best to land this. <laughs> That's always the goal. Yeah, the last re-entry, we had the last re-entry, dudes. Dudes, we had the last re-entry. We made a huge mistake and it 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 ate us so fast that it's so it's absolutely clear what happened is the second that we decided to do the um the starboard side turn that's when we were done so we should have just stayed the course just steady as she goes stayed at that angle and we'd have gotten there we'd have been fine we put in that turn and that's what kicked our ass so i expect we'll do better We've, uh, before yesterday, or the day before yesterday, last stream, um, we, we were nailing them. I mean, we were just, every re-entry, we were, we were hitting them. Dead on the nose. It was as if we knew what we were doing. Passing 4,000 units of electric charge now. In phase two, or two orbits into our correction. Three orbits into the correction. One more and we can plot. Re-entry corridor C. Okay, here we go. Now we go ahead and plot the next, uh, next orbit. Return to re-entry corridor. Return to the re-entry corridor, please. Yeah, we'll fix it from there. Okay, go ahead and turn to that node. We were off by a couple thousandths. We also didn't, we didn't correct our correction. We, or we didn't fine tune our correction. I forgot to do that. Oh well. Okay, so this we're gonna need to be flipped over this way. Okay, reentry corridor. Reentry corridor C, hit it. So the next Starship prototype is getting ready to fly probably next week at the earliest. Uh, I think we can watch the live, watch that live on stream. Well, not on my stream, unfortunately. Um, those are all copyrighted. That's all copyrighted stuff. Um, I can't just, I can't just play somebody else's live stream. Is it's not legit to do that.
I can watch it. We could all watch it together. Like, you guys can have whatever streams up, and I can be also watching those streams, but I can't rebroadcast anything about them. Yeah, all I can do is kind of comment on them. So, 3114, we're on the retrograde marker. RCS on, docking mode on, and we need to change this to... Oops, wrong way, bro. Okay, 3114, zero. Whoa. What the hell? Oh, I took it out of fine controls. No wonder it's been acting weird. Okay, there we go. 31-1404. We're back in the lane. Make sure everything's safe. Yep. Okay, so... Uh, that should be it. Yeah, let's go ahead and get on over to the first, uh, first pass. Not the first pass. Well, we got to do it right now. Wow. Okay. What the hell? Looks pretty good. All right. Reentry corridor correction. Trajectory correction. we want to be banked a little bit to the starboard right and then it should roll us to the correct uh, 
attitude by the time we get there. Oh, a little bit more, huh? Definitely got this in the bag. We're talking Delta V status is uh, no problem. This is a pretty heavy correction burn, I'm not going to lie. Um, we, we made a mistake somewhere along the lines here. Um, and I think... I don't know. I don't know for sure. I don't want to speculate on exactly what what went wrong there. But it certainly wasn't exactly according to plan. We should have had one orbit before we come into this burn, and that orbit wasn't there. We we needed to get into this burn right away, and that that was something was we did something wrong up front. We waited one orbit that had to have been it. The original burn, we were like, oh, we got onto it too soon. We need to wait one orbit. So I waited. And that had to have been that orbit. So I was wrong in waiting. Anyway, there's our correction burn. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, replot, the reentry. Let's see how this is shaping up. little bit north actually no we want to be going yeah north if we want south Try right about there. We're looking at seven meter burn for that correction. Yeah, it looks like a pretty good track right there. I like it. Um, go ahead and turn us to that node. Hit it. We're now down to 2,000 units of electric charge. We're going to go ahead and kick on the, uh, the fuel cell. Because at this point, there's no reason not to. Our periapsis up here is seven thousand or seventy nine seven hundred. So uh, yeah, I would expect over here should be actually pretty correct. I don't even need a altitude correction burn. Yeah, look at that. We're at 80 right there. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Okay, so 80 to 40. Let's get a periapsis of 40 here. And we've got no... We don't have any payload. Completely empty on this. 
And why does it look like we are so far north? Look at that. It's like our track... What the hell just happened? Uh, we need normal burn in order to see if we can't correct this really quick. Yeah, we're we're really far north. I did. Pff, pff, what the? Pff, what the hell? Come on, what's going on here? RCS on, docking mode on. Okay, I don't, I can't see any. Okay. I'm not seeing any noticeable change. Okay, this may be right here. I can't I can't see a noticeable difference. Um I cannot see a noticeable difference. I don't know why. I would expect that we should be seeing some change putting that in there. We need to get this done like fast, fast, fast. Yeah, okay, yeah, we were we were getting the opposite effect of what we wanted. That's what I was worried about. Turn us quickly to the other side. We need to get this correction quick, quick, quick. Not seeing any noticeable difference to our advantage here. This is really bad news. I'm not. I get one way, it doesn't look like it's giving us anything. I go the other way. I'm still not getting anything. I am not getting anything here. We've got... This is terrible for us. This is utterly... Terrible. <sighs> Alright, well. Not much choice in the matter now, is there? What do you think, Jack? There's no chance. There's no chance. We're past. We need to take it now. Fuck! I am very unhappy about this. We made two correction burns, and the goddamn thing... That is so lame. So lame. So lame. Alright, so here's our solution for this pile of dog shit that we've been handed here. Um, if we put our put our target indicator very, really far, put as much speed as we possibly can, we might be able to make a correction turn, but not until after we get through the fire. Uh, might be faulty thinking. Hedge your bet just a bit. Get us some, but not all the way to that, that last flag. Put it right there. Okay. There it is. That's that's our, our track, and we're taking it. Man. Very unhappy about this. Very unhappy indeed. Initiate landing pull. Okay, all flight controllers, go no go for landing. Retro, go. Fido, go. Guide, go. Control, go. Telcom, go. GNC, go. Ecom, go. Surgeon, go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Houston, you're go for landing, over. I turn it go for landing. 
Hit it. I just have to be, uh... We're putting it in, sw in Jack Swaggart's hands. It'll be up to him to take this crap and deal with it because we're out of time. I see a problem, and uh, this we should have seen this a bit earlier. Seems as our our ohms is off track. It was definitely yeah. See, look how far off track it is. That's uh, that. I don't know if that's fully to blame, but anyway, let's get on with it here. We need to uh, get ready for reentry, whatever, wherever it may be putting us. I hope that it puts us where we need to go. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie, turn off the fuel cell. Drain the tanks. Uncork the engines. Pin the reentry computer. Advanced orbital horizon. Forward roll to zero. Orbital uh, reentry computer. Take that to the reentry computer. We need to take this to 37.5 on the angle. Close the payload bay doors, and we are ready for re-entry. There it is. It's all down to this. Let's go. Okay, we're approaching the channel now. And we have started to slow down right on cue.
2280, approaching the bay. Out of time acceleration now. 2250, we're gonna trim a little bit here. Forty, a little bit more. Okay, twenty two hundred. We're back. Uh, we're over the over the bay now. Back over terra firma. Twenty one hundred. Targets in sight. It's actually like dead in, dead ahead which it shouldn't be we should be like way far north of it ironically we're a lot more on target how the hell did that happen that's impossible anyway we're about uh, two kilometers in speed let's go ahead and kill some of that speed Huh. How did we get so damn accurate? You guys saw it. It was like we were way over here. Yeah. Looks like we're going to get ourselves a pretty decent uh, re-entry re uh, landing as well, too. I was really, really bummed and worried that we were coming in super high or super north. Super far north, but uh, this is this is what we plotted for. <laughs> this is what we plotted for, and this is what we got. How oh, nice! We're we're coming in a bit fast. We're still like actually really, really, really fast. We do destroy that speed. We know how to surefire way to destroy the speed is get a roll. Get us plus 15 port side roll. Whoops, that's starboard. Oh well, that'll work too. Negative. Yeah, we really overshot. If we can pull out of this turn fast enough and maintain enough altitude. go 
might be able to make it over here, but there's no chance we overshot the runway. This would be the first time we ever landed at this runway if we can actually make it. Big lift, baby, yeah! Brakes on immediately, actually. Let's do that right now. Look at this. Okay, so we didn't uh, make it to the runway that we were hoping for, but we did prove a couple things. First off, like, we were hauling ass, and when we got into that turn, like, it murdered it. So, that's something we should use to our advantage in the future. If we'd have uh, struck on the idea of... Uh, getting into that turn earlier or recognizing that we were going too fast earlier then uh, we could have put more into the turn or whatever we needed in order to get to get it to slow down on cue Yeah! <laughs> I wasn't gonna risk it. It's like, uh, put it, get the brakes on, get the brakes on, let's just go ahead and kill it right here. No immersive slowdown. But uh, when you're dealing in live mode with, uh, with your Kerbals, and this happens, uh, that's what we do. <laughs> we step on the brakes hard. We did it! Uh, yeah, a couple of, uh, couple of career firsts in this mission. A couple of really interesting career firsts. One, a shuttle landed out here. We might as well keep this shuttle here as part of the, uh, derelict vehicles, I suppose, right? Uh, but yeah, we need to now go over and get a, uh, need to get a, uh, rescue operation to fly over here. Um, let's move this thing a little bit. Can we, yeah, get it at least off of the runway. We'll put this, uh, over here in this hangar. Yeah, our first shuttle landing at the island runway. Way 
to back it up. Not gonna be able to turn hard enough. Torque wheel, turn it. STS-115 landed on the runway, on the island runway. It did? Did it really? No. If we the launch... Did it? I swear we, this is the first time we've landed a shuttle over here. Anyway, it's better than going into the drink, right? I mean, can we all agree on that? One fifteen, really? I'm gonna have to look that up. So I'm not sure about that. But yeah, there we go. There's our shuttle. Let's go ahead and get a a plane of some stripe to come over here. And pick these kerbals up. We flew a helicopter over here to get the crew, I remember. I do vaguely remember a shuttle. You're probably right. Yeah. And it was all in live mode, too? Okay, I gotta go to bed now. Bye. All right, Reagan. Well, thanks for dropping in. You have yourself a good evening. Global stop. I'm not going to put this in live mode right here. We're going to not say simulator and we're not going to say live just for this little bit here. I'm not going to pick up the Kerbals or anything. I just want to do a couple of flights with this to get used to the controls. And then when we're ready, we'll go back into live mode. Hmm. Well. Oh, yeah. 
definitely. <laughs> that works. Hey, it actually works on the for slowing it down on a runway too. Except we lost a couple wings. It looks like yeah, it tore off the back. No, those are up there. What? Oh. Hmm. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Nine, huh? Okay. Nine and eight. I see, I see. Okay. Alrighty then, let's go ahead and do this again. Revert this back to the launch. Try it again. Executive Jet! Yeah, it's. I've been wanting to use this thing for a while. It's got the cool uh, fold-out door. I was really really like that the problem is that this thing lands really fast um, it's, a, it's a little bit dangerous to land so I wanted to get a couple of quick test flights here to a couple touch and goes get the feel of the vehicle before I do say that we're going to use it for sure Okay, so SAS on zero. And this thing has crazy overdrive too, but we're not going to use it because it's just going to cause problems. Oh, we just broke off our wings. See, like I said, I knew those things were down there, those, because that's how we maintain level flight. Okay, so we need to actually bring this back into the space plane hangar. I made a change not too long ago. Off stream, we were playing around with the planes, and I took that last, that tiny landing gear piece in the back, and I moved it further in, and so. Yeah, that was a mistake. We need to pull that out. I was trying to hide it inside of here, was the idea. And it hit it well, but it also decreased its effectiveness to the point of why have it. Okay, so something like that. Also, this thing has a like a modest VTOL. We installed a, a VTOL setup in this thing so that we could uh, we could land anywhere in the world, but but I haven't gotten a whole hell of a lot of use out of this vehicle. Eight are the flaps. Yeah, it needs, it takes. 
Takes a lot of speed to get off the ground, man. Fortunately, we do have a system on this thing to take off quickly. So if we need to take off from, say, like the, the runway over there, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. We can overdrive these engines. landing man Training wheel is working again. Still pretty rough. We didn't. What the hell happened to my flaps? I didn't have the flaps extended during that. See, I don't know. It's. It seems the more that we use the flaps, it's like we kind of come to the realization that. Seems better to just go without them. Do landings without them. Control just is not as good, I swear. Get a 
far softer, more precision landing without with the flaps forward than we can with them down. Look at this approach. Whoa, we're actually completely out of speed, 30 meters a second. <laughs> Now let's see how we can do with a proper approach. Love the speed of this, we should use it more. See, it's all about the landing though. I'm, I'm concerned that the landing may be dangerous. The speed is nice, yes, but Uh, try landing with a proper approach. Say we're actually in flight with a crew or a load of passengers, say. Put the sucker way the hell down and try and get a landing going. Landing is so jarring. Then carry speed for days. How about if we uh, do our approach and we come in, we just slow it down so much earlier.
try low speed gliding. This is where having the added surface area would... You would think, I mean, that's kind of the whole idea is that the flaps, the more surface area you can... You can glide better at slower speeds. We are stalled right here. In fact, we are crashing. Yeah, we're gonna crash. This craft is just not worthy. It's not. I don't feel safe enough Picking up our astronauts with this thing. It sucks. It just sucks. Yeah, I don't like it. You had it under complete control. At 40 meters a second, we're dropping like a stone. Yeah, sure, it stops on a dime when it crashes into the ground. <laughs> If I close my eyes, I think we're on a helicopter. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, good one, dude. Try flying to the island and, and landing there. That's what we're going to do. And you like the speed of this vehicle. Yeah, it's got good speed. Three hundred meters. Almost. Come on. Yeah, she tops out at about 320, even with the uh, overdrive.
But yeah, she's fast. It's definitely very, very fast. Can we make our Kerbal Blackout? If we kept going, perhaps. <laughs> Like if we had the uh, the afterburners on, and So that wasn't bad. I mean, that was a that was a pretty legit landing right there. Despite the weight of the vehicle kind of slapping the nose down, that wasn't too bad. Oh look, our plane over here, our Hughes H1. It's actually moseyed all the way from the graveyard. And it's coming out onto the runway. We ought to just take some explosives and strap it to that thing and get rid of it. All right, fine. We will... Fine, we will do this mission with this. Let's go back to the launch. Live mode on. Where do you get your mods? Um, I just Google it. I think it's Curse. They're hosted mostly on Curse. There was one that there's um, that we had to go to the forums. Uh, we might not use that for that uh, mod anymore. All right, fine. We're gonna take the the Learjet for an actual mission. Alcard, our brave pilot, has volunteered un, uh, against his will. <laughs> Actually, hold on. O open the door one more time. We want to turn this light off. There you go. Now close the door. Two sets of wheels here. At 140, it should stop us quite, quite well.
trying to get our bank in a commercial kind of way. There's no way that uh, a commercial pilot would, would, would make that turn with that heavy a bank. meters a second with no afterburners. That's pretty insane. That is really fast. Card survived. <laughs> that was awesome. So glad that we decided to go into live mode for the and and use a Learjet to try and recover Kerbals. <laughs> that was a pretty legit wreck too. Like the we were landed, we were fine, and just a tiny like pebble or inconsistency in the in the terrain made our back end slip out from underneath of us the fact that we caused that much carnage and, and survived we walk away from it that's awesome that is really super cool <laughs> he survived I can't believe it I thought I thought he was doomed 
That was so cool. All right, well, I guess we'll run him on over to uh, to meet with these guys because uh, he's, well, needs to get rescued. It's going to be tough to land there now. No, we've got helicopters. You can see it's not the first time we've crashed out here. Um, there's a... This one actually killed a Kerbal. That was um, an F... An F-35 Lightning II. Which spun out of control... And a Kerbal died. The other stuff out here was okay though, like the... Uh, that Harrier is actually legitimately um, Henry Kerman's Harrier. You can't see it's on the other side of this wall. And then this here was our first attempt at building the H1 racer which was a really good plane it is a really good plane just the landing gear well it's actually got robotic parts on it I don't know what I was thinking that uh, we would able be able to keep this thing out here with the robotic parts I should have known that that would not be good well the Harrier actually also has robotic parts now I think about it and it's been okay I guess that must have been my rationale how about this we could come over here we could grab this Harrier and fly it back and then get another plane to fly over here to pick up those dudes But this is actually the F Mark I Harrier. This is the legit um, first one that we gave Henry way back. Never got de-rendered. So this is Henry's Harrier and over here it sits. See if we flew it back then we would effectively lose it because we'd be I don't want to do that. I'd rather it stay here. Yeah, we'll just get another crew to fly over. I'll just walk this guy on over to the to the shuttle and let these guys know, oh, I'm sorry, you're not going to be going home for a while. We've booked you a room at the airport, Hilton. <laughs> How immersive. And he can't even get on board with these guys because they're there's not a, there's a, there's no room. Knock knock knock. <laughs> so anyway, here he'll he'll stay because he's got no vehicle. Oh my god, that's that's crazy. <laughs> Oh my 
my god. Yeah, you got it right this time, Starch Base. Um, we're going to go ahead and call it right here for this evening. But don't go anywhere. So we're going to go ahead and host up another Kerbal player, drop in on somebody new and say hi. Click the follow button. I encourage you guys to do the same. Um, if you're not already followers to the channel, be sure to uh, remember to follow the channel. Follow us on our socials, uh, YouTube and Twitter. The links are down below. We put up all of our, we sideload all of our, uh, all of our stuff to YouTube, but we also go through and get uh, edited highlights, which we uh, then post up to Twitter. So be sure to follow us on those socials. Um, we appreciate all the support and appreciate you guys coming and just hanging out with us. And uh, hope to catch up with you guys for more Kerbal Space Program next time. Until then, stay cool, and uh, I guess we'd bring it back, right? See you next time, and stay away from the voodoo. Have a good night, guys. Yeah.